may look like a holiday shopping showdown, but it's a Nissan sales event to add. Good thing my Rogue has intelligent all-wheel drive. So does my Altima. Now get 2.9% APR financing for 60 months on Rogue, or get a low $3.99 per month lease on Frontier. Better hurry, these offers won't be back in stock. This is a story of first downs and second chances. I wanted to keep playing, but my feet hurt. You'd think all those big league experts could have helped. You have access to anything, but none of it worked. His football career ended, but his plantar fasciitis pain didn't. Till he found the Good Feet store. I got fitted for my arch supports. Let me tell you something. They work. Now, he recommends Good Feet to... Anybody. If you move, go to the Good Feet store. See for yourself with a free arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. 60 years ago, Adventist Health responded to the community's need for a medical facility in Windward, Oahu. Castle Memorial opened in 1963, providing quality health care to island families. Later, we became Castle Medical Center, and now we're Adventist Health Castle. Our commitment to quality health care continues to grow, serving even more families with even more locations island-wide. See why Kama Aina trust Adventist Health Castle for all the times of their life. On this special edition of Board Stories TV, we head down to Nicaragua for a collaboration with Rise Up Surf Retreats. With a number of talented surfers, including a squad of young Peruvian surfers, this adventure is packed with action. Join us as we explore the firing beach breaks of Nicaragua. Tune in to Board Stories TV Saturday nights at 9.30 on OC16. Hey, it's Jimmy Bender. You're watching Spectrum OC16. It's Game On, presented by Bank of Hawaii. Tonight, it is the final home weekend of the regular season for the Rainbow Wahine as they host the Tritons of UC San Diego. And this is Game On, presented by Bank of Hawaii for Rainbow Wahine Volleyball. Hi everybody, happy Aloha Friday. Scott Robbs along with Lisa Strand and Ryan Clay. Suji, big matchups this weekend, but first let's look back to last week. Hawaii on the road for the final time during the regular season and a couple of good wins. Hawaii in three over UC Irvine and then taking it in four over Cal State Fullerton, a match in which Hawaii had seven of their 12 service aces in that final set. So let's look at the Big West Conference scoreboard. One match on Tuesday. The teams that will be playing Hawaii this weekend it was Long Beach State in three over UC San Diego. Cal State Fullerton in four over, excuse me, uh, Cal State Big Field in four over Cal State Fullerton. UC Irvine with a sweep over CSUN. Other scores are UC Santa Barbara, UC Davis tied at one, leading by a pair in the third is UC Davis, and a clean sweep for Cal Poly over UC Riverside. So let's take a look at the Big West Conference standings. UC Santa Barbara has already locked up the number one seed for next week's Big West Conference tournament. If you look in the far right uh, column, it is the RPI. You see Long Beach State. Uh, at 13 and 4 with that win earlier on Tuesday, Cal Poly also 13 and 4. Hawaii a half game back because they haven't played tonight with a 69 RPI. So Hawaii would have to win the Big West tournament more than likely to get in to the NCAA tournament. So let's take a look at the brackets. The only one that is set is the number one seed, that is UC Santa Barbara. For Hawaii, they control their own destiny. A win tonight and a win tomorrow night would assure them of the number two seed and a bye in the first round. If not, they could fall as far down as number four. So obviously it's a big weekend for Hawaii, and here's the thoughts of some of the Wahine. I think we talked a lot about momentum, and this weekend is gonna be really important to keep going with the momentum. So this weekend is very important for us, and we just gotta lock in on these games and 
just keep going forward and keep pushing. I think we're all 12 and four in our record, so these next two games really are make or break, especially the Long Beach game. I think we all have a chip on our shoulder for senior night especially. This is our senior's last night to play, so yeah, I'm really excited to see everyone just go out and play. You know, the teams are getting better in the Big West. I mean, even in the preseason, you know, we're all playing different teams. We're all like, you know, having some wins against some top teams. And that's, I think that's good for our, you know, our conference. They're, you know, the coaches are coaching them, coaching them up and then they just, you know, players just got fight. Time now for Say What? Brought to you by Heineken. All right, let's take a look. It's come down to this final weekend in the conference. Hawaii fighting to get a bye, finishing that top two. And really, like I said, they control their own destiny. If they can win tonight and tomorrow night, they got that bye. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been mentioned a few times, but if there was ever a year to begin the Big West Conference Championship Tournament, it's this year for the Rainbow Wahine. If not, this would be uh, the last matches of the season. So the Wahine still holding on to hope and really hoping to try to ride some of that momentum. But why the Wahine cannot let up this weekend. This is a critical match. I think there's a big difference from them being the four seed compared to being the number two seed and being on the opposite side of the bracket from Santa Barbara. That is going to be a very important place that the Wahine want to find themselves, especially playing playing in a place like the Pyramid. Especially playing in the Pyramid, and I cannot agree more. But the big question is the pressure. Can they uphold it? There's a lot of distractions this weekend, it being senior week in the last two home matches for six seniors. And according to Coach Robin Amo, she just says, we just got to play. You know, we got to play our game, and that's really what it's all about. Pressure, really? No matter what, they're going to go to this conference playoff. You know, Ryan, you look at this Rainbow Wahine team, and the lineup is still in flux. Here we are in the last week of the regular season. What do you expect? I mean, even Robin says, I don't know from match to match which team's going to show up. Yeah, I mean, and I think that is a concern as a coach, uh, as well as a spectator and a fan. I mean, you want consistency going into this match because you know what you're, you can expect when your team gets on the court. I think the Rainbow Wahine have something to do. We know there's going to be Amber JD and some of the go-to Kate Lang, some of the staples of this team. But some of these other players really have to solidify their roles because as it gets to crunch time and postseason play, uh, stability is going to be key. I have newsflash. It is crunch time. You know, they really, they're this far along in this season, it is unfortunate. And I'm, I'm sure incredibly frustrating for the coaching staff and the players that they have not been able to solidify a starting lineup. All right, should be a fun one here tonight. Hawaii, UCSD, and the gentlemen, they'll be calling the action. It's Kanoa and C-Mac, guys. Thanks a lot, Scott. Yeah, next to C-Mac, I'm Kanoa Leahy. And uh, Chris, hey, look, this is a Hawaii team. As you heard the corner crew talking about, they have been through a whole lot of lineup changes, a lot of variations, a lot of different looks. And so they come in tonight, still led, though, by a couple of prime pieces. Of course, it is Amber Igedi who is at the forefront of that effort. Yeah, she, she's just uh, just a one amazing player, an amazing person. The players all love her. Uh, she's a great leader. Physically, she's so dynamic. Even if you put three blockers up on her, it's a pretty good chance she's going to win that war most of the time. So, uh, and plus she's playing some great back row defense too and picking up a lot of aces here and there. So just an all around inspiration for this team. No question about it. Uh, meanwhile, one of the players who has seen her role fluctuate in and out of the lineup uh, as of late has been playing some really good volleyball. Tally Hawkins, who is the reigning Big West Conference Freshman of the Week, uh, had a dazzling uh, couple of matches on the road last week. And so it's interesting how her season has ebbed and flowed. It really has. You know, she's, she had a great um, fall camp, and that's why she started in the beginning of the year. And then she started to tail off a little bit. And all of a sudden, now she's got this resurgence. And amazing is that it's come while her brothers are at war in Israel. Because, uh, you, know, you know, there's a lot going on in her head and in her heart when she steps on the court every night. I think this may be a place where she's kind of like a refuge for her to get away from it all. That's yeah. what Robin Amo was saying to us earlier this week. Uh, certainly playing with a, a heavy heart and with a lot of thoughts for sure. But uh, again, once again, playing some good volleyball here uh, as of late. On the other side, you have UC San Diego, uh, a team that is not eligible for the Big West Conference postseason but they will be next year. This is their final season of their transition into NCAA Division I status. And so head coach uh, Ricky Ludes, he's talking about uh, this team as being on the come up. And certainly 
in this transition phase, they have gotten better and better and better. They are led by Ava McInnes, who is averaging over 3.7 kills per set. Yeah, Ava's a really, really good player. She's two-time All-Big West. She made the All-Freshman team a couple years ago. She's a CIF Player of the Year at 6'2". She's, she's tall. And before, she used to be a middle. So she's a converted middle to the outside. You don't see that that often in the Division I women's volleyball. She had three, 11 kills against uh, um, Hawaii the other night, uh, in the last minute matchup, and 11 kills against Long Beach State on Tuesday night at 337. So she's ready to play. She'll see about ev almost every other set. You'll be calling her name a lot tonight, Kanoa. Well, speaking of middles, Emily McDaniel, their top middle and one of the best blockers in the conference did not make a trip, is dealing with uh, an issue. Uh, the word is that possibly it is a concussion, but did not make the trip is not going to play in this match, and that could factor heavily. We'll see how it all plays out here. A must-win situation for Hawaii to position itself to get that possible second seed in the Big West Conference Tournament. We'll see you at first serve. Let's send it back over to the corner. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to hear from a couple of Rainbow Wahine. We haven't seen a lot of action this season, but the future's bright for both. How deep do Pizza Hut's roots run in Hawaii? Through all the decades, we know what our island ohana love. Great taste at an even better price. Like our large one-topping carry-out pizza for just $14.99. You choose your favorite topping. Pepperoni, olives, sausage, or any other single topping. Our $14.99 large one-topping pizza. Order online and carry one out today. Only at Hawaii Pizza Hut. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. Plus America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR, plus zero payments for 90 days, plus a thousand bonus cash on the Santa Fe. See your Hawaii Hyundai dealers. I'm 50 feet, and I'm Neha, and, and you're, you're watching Spectre OC16. Adventist Health Castle is here for all the times of your life. When you're welcoming that new arrival or need something mended with absolute precision. When the unexpected happens or when you just need things set right. As a nationally recognized medical center, we have been serving three generations of Kama'aina. Another reason to choose Adventist Health Castle. Life's an adventure, and you're made for more. This is a story of first downs and second chances. I wanted to keep playing, but my feet hurt. You'd think all those big league experts could have helped. You have access to anything, but none of it worked. His football career ended, but his plantar fasciitis pain didn't. Till he found the Good Feet store. I got fitted for my arch supports. Let me tell you something. They work. Now, he recommends Good Feet to... Anybody. If you move, go to the Good Feet store. See for yourself with a free arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. And welcome back to Simplify Arena. It's Dan Sheriffs in here on a Friday night. It is senior week in Hawaii, playing host to UC San Diego. But you see that young lady, freshman outside hitter, Stella Ademi. She came a long way to Manoa, all the way from the state of Nebraska. She came here so she can get better. I think I chose Hawaii because obviously it's like really special and I feel like it was a place where I could be pushed um, by the coaches and by the athletes. Um, so that's really why I chose it and I just knew that the culture too is something that I couldn't get anywhere else. She's the definition of one speed, this girl. I keep telling them, I think from the beginning, I was like, you can't have you're like, you know, one, one, two, three, four, three, like gears or like speeds. When you come inside, you just gotta go one every time. And that girl from the get-go just comes in and just hits the wall, you know, like gunning every day at practice. Yeah, in everything, defense, um, passing, she just goes. Uh, she's, she's got a lot of potential, you know, a very athletic kid. It was kind of difficult in the beginning because um, obviously it was different than club, but I think um, through double days and through other training, it allowed for a better transition for me. 
So having um, a lot of hours in the gym really helped. All right, let's take a look at the freshman from Papillion, Nebraska. She's been in a handful of matches so far this year. 12 sets, 1.25 kills per set, and hitting an even 300 on the year. But guys, the, the few times we have seen her on the court, you can see she's just oozing with talent. She may be in the starting lineup come next year. Well, she's a true freshman. She's real young, and she just needs a little bit more time to develop her skill set. But according to Coach Robin Amo, she says this young lady comes to practice and she gives it her all. She just needs to develop a few more things, but she plays with a lot of confidence. Yeah, and when you think of her, she's pretty undersized at 5'11", mm -hmm. so she has to rely on her athleticism and her jump. She kind of reminds me a little of a player that when I was on the coaching staff played uh, Stephanie Farrell, a very aggressive offensively, will swing at just about any ball, likes the heavy scene balls, likes to go in the sharp cross, uh, and just has that really solid, solid arm swing. But I think the more that she gets confidence and the more playing time she gets here in this season, there's no doubt that we will see her a lot more next year. How much do you think her height, and she's listed at 5'11", we know she's not, but how much do you think her height maybe scared off the Power 5 teams? Yeah, I think that definitely is a factor, but it really bodes well for play, uh, teams and conferences where Hawaii is because mm -hmm. these are the type of the players that often get overlooked just simply by looking at them, uh, and you're able to build uh, you know, the player as, as they move along through the program, and I think she's one that Hawaii is invested in, no doubt. Well, another newcomer this year to the Rainbow Walking A team, defensive specialist Kobe Lane. Always wanted to be a Rainbow Walking A, but started off her career at Seattle University, but now she's living her dream. I knew that I still wanted to play while I had eligibility and time, and obviously, like, I'm still 20, 22. Um, so I figure I'd just take my chances now before it's too late. And yeah, it was definitely, I'm not going to say it was easy. It was really risky sacrificing all of that um, just for the chance to play. I know a lot of local girls dream of playing on this team. I, I was one of them. So just the fact that I was able to make it come true, it's surreal. It works hard when she goes in the gym. I like her work ethic. I would like her to, I, I think she can be a little bit. She's tough. I just, I know that there's more toughness in her. I don't know if that's how to say it, but I think she has way more to give than what she is right now. Um, my little word for her is, oh, the scoop, or you got the best, like, scoop. <laughs> Out of the three, like, when she goes and pursues balls, she can just just go forward, dig, like, get a scoop up, and then get right back up. All right, let's take a look at Kobe, a McKinley graduate out of Honolulu, a junior, as you mentioned, has appeared in uh, six sets, five matches, as a uh, one dig per set average and a couple of service aces. It was interesting, Robin talking about the toughness. Robin really likes this young lady because they're both McKinley high graduates, but she talked about the fact that there's more there. How do you draw that out of somebody? Yeah, you know, I think it's just going to come with time overall. And you got to think about it. This is a player that has watched this program, who has idolized many of the players that came before her. And so sometimes it may feel a little surreal that she's maybe in this position as a Rainbow Wahine. And she has some pretty big competition ahead of her. And so I think it's just credit for her that she's able to compete with the likes of two very good liberos that are in front of her. Yeah, and I got to give her a lot of credit. She took a leap of faith. She was knocking on the door for a little bit. Her story is an amazing story, and she really believed in it, and she just kept feeling in her heart that she still wanted to play, and she perse persevered, and you can't teach perseverance. She kept knocking on the door, and Coach Robin Amo finally gave her that opportunity, and she's answered that question. Well, she tried to walk on to the program a, a season ago. It, it didn't work out, so she came back again, like you said, said, Coach Robin, give me a chance, and here she is wearing the uh, Rainbow Waikini colors. It's a great story. Yeah, and you know what? She pushes the others to become better, and I think that's most important. Her role right now is just to be there and be, you know, if she gets called upon, she goes in and makes something happen. But her playing time is so limited. So on the B side, if you will, she's really a big factor for this team's success. All right, so Rainbow Wahine in the Tritons. When we come back, we'll break down this big matchup. I got me a paradise. It's your paradise, too. Experience the beauty of the islands in a Honda Hybrid with fuel efficiency and range that saves you money while keeping our Ina a paradise. Right now, kickoff adventure in the perfect island ride 
a new Honda Hybrid and get two years complimentary maintenance. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. Tell them Henry sent you. I've always had a love for anything local. Ever since I was a child visiting my grandma's lay shop, I felt a deep connection to the local shopkeepers, local artisans, and local farmers who make Hawaii so unique and so special. Today, I'm grateful to have a job helping Bank of Hawaii and its employees give back to our local communities. I'm Momia Kimsu from Bank of Hawaii, and I'm proud to help you live your happy. Bounced from one doctor to the next. Did they even send my lab work? Wait, was I supposed to bring that? Then there's the forms, the bills, the not a bills, the... Healthcare can get a whole lot easier when your medical records, care, and coverage are in one place. At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together for all that is you. Next week on Hawaii Goes Fishing, a group of fishermen from Hawaii and an Alaskan fishing lodge get a unique boat-to-table experience in Yamagata, Japan. What can't be caught can certainly be bought when the weather turns bad. And trollers drag lures in search of pelagics along the Waianae coastline. All this and more on Hawaii Goes Fishing, Sunday at 5 and all next week. Time Out for Health is brought to you by Hawaii Pacific Health. Hi, my name is Jilly Noy. I'm a sports medicine physician at the Hawaii Pacific Health Bone and Joint Center at Palimomi. Today we're talking about running a little bit. Running is a great form of exercise. It has many benefits. However, with running, sometimes there can be associated injuries. I want to talk to you today a little bit about iliotibial band syndrome or IT band syndrome. The IT band goes from the outside of your hip to the outside of your knee, so it can cause both hip and knee pain. But there are some things that we can do to decrease your risk of getting these injuries, and one of those is dynamic stretching. One of the dynamic stretches we can show you today, I have Sherry here with us, and she'll be going over the stretch. So what you want to do is you kind of want to kick up your leg while keeping your knee straight. And you can do this about 10 to 12 times for each side. After you exercise, there's another stretch that you could do to help the IT band. It's the side bending stretch. So you actually want to put the sore leg behind the leg that's not sore and stretch to the opposite side. Again, running is a great form of exercise. Those stretches are some ways that we can decrease our risk in addition to making sure you have good rest days and not doing too much too fast. Thank you very much and stay safe. Back at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, getting closer and closer to opening serve Hawaii and UC San Diego. Let's take a look now at the season stat comparisons between these two. Both have nice overall records. The kills percent, Hawaii uh, leading that category as well as kill percentage. But look at blocking. UC San Diego out blocking Hawaii statistically. Uh, the digs are fairly even, but how about the aces to service errors? It's remarkable. The Tritons actually have more aces than errors on the year. All right, now let's take a look at the stat leaders for the University of Hawaii. Well, these three have really established themselves as the offensive leaders for Hawaii. Amari GD, of course, leading the way, hitting 390 with 3.65 kills per set. Caitlin Alexara, Alexander at 2.90 kills per set. And Riley Wagner becoming that factor you see there, overall 2.26 yeah, you know, kills per set. Yeah, you know, I took this shirt to the dry cleaning. <laughs> yep, we got that. Moving on to the Frightens we see San Diego, their go-to girl, Ava McGuire, the junior 6-2 outside hitter. They will see her a lot tonight. Lauren Roper, a middle blocker, doing a nice job in the middle as a 6-1 freshman. And Jasmine Saran, also another middle blocker, doing a great job, 6-3 middle blocker. All right, let's take a look at the first meeting between two, these two, Hawaii, winning it pretty handily in three. Look at Hawaii's hitting percentage. They hit 388 in that match and pretty much dominated from start to finish. And this was earlier on in the season as well. 
All right, time now for the countdown. Finish your thought, though, right? No, I just, you know, this was early in the season, so there's been a lot of adjustments that mm -hmm. have been made overall uh, between both of these teams. And so we'll see if some of those, uh, you know, statistics that the Wahine were able to successfully have back then can hold true right now. And one of the things that the Wahine really need to do is this team is a very good blocking team. So I think that they're going to have to move around the blocking of San Diego and also pass. I mean, you, we saw their service aces. They have nothing to lose. This is their last match of the season. I mean, they made the playoffs, but they don't get to go because they're new to the Division One Conference as of 2020. It takes three years for you to establish yourself. Four, actually. Four, there you which go. Which is ridiculous. Which is just a long time. It's a and super long time. All right, Ryan. <laughs> We talked a little bit, or we mentioned the fact that this Hawaii team is a little bit, a little schizophrenic this year. How do you make sure Hawaii comes out and plays their A game tonight? Well, I think one of the things is really going to come down to that senior leadership. Players like Amber Ijeeli, Riley Wagner, they have to recognize the significance of this moment. The fact that this is their last weekend here in this arena, and they have to really lead by example. I think that if they set the pace, if they really just set the tone for the rest of the team, the rest of the team will follow them. What's the number one thing Hawaii has to do well tonight? Exactly that. The momentum has to say they have to focus and trust in the training that they've had. Believe in themselves and play with a ton of confidence. Who's the player to keep an eye on, Ryan? Well, I think there's going to be some of these X factors, and one of those players could be a player like Kennedy Evans, a player who has gotten more involved offensively. The middles, if anything, have become a strong suit for Hawaii, and I think Kennedy Evans is one of those players that often gets overlooked, but if Hawaii can stay in system, she can have a successful night. All right, this should be a fun one. It's Hawaii, UC San Diego. Earlier this afternoon, there was women's basketball, the Rainbow Wagene beat USF. Take a look at Rich Sheard's crew as they lay down the Terraflex. The three of us will be back when this one's power up. But coming up next, we have the Hawaii Ponoe and the first serve. What's up, everybody? Cooking the holiday meal over here, making apple pie. All right. Babe, when you go along, can you get butter and flour? Sometimes the holidays can get away from you. Luckily, our longs has everything we need. Make longs a part of your day. How deep do Pizza Hut's roots run in Hawaii? Through all the decades, we know what our island ohana love. Great taste at an even better price. Like our large one-topping carry-out pizza for just $14.99. You choose your favorite topping, pepperoni, olives, sausage, or any other single topping. Our $14.99 large one topping pizza. Order online and carry one out today, only at Hawaii Pizza Hut. Let's get it. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. Plus America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR, plus zero payments for 90 days, plus a thousand bonus cash on the Santa Fe. See your Hawaii Hyundai dealers. How's it going? You got Lanai with Cooking Hawaiian Style, presented by the University of Hawaii Maui College. And look who we got in the kitchen this week. It's Frank B. Shaner. Thank what are you going to be making? Well, we're going to really um, delve into the cream tuna grilled rice bowl. Nice. And then, bang, we're going to come right back. My mom's favorite. Uh -huh. And I, I start to tear up when I do this. <laughs> cream tuna on rice. That's what this show's all about. We want a little emotion in the Thank food. Thank you. Check your local listings for times. It's cooking Hawaiian style. Hey, how's it? I'm Lanai, and you're watching Spectrum OC16. Volleyball fans, we know you're rising for the National Anthem in Hawaii Ponoi, but before we do that this evening, volleyball fans, last Friday during UH's win at UC Irvine, senior middle blocker Amber Igedi recorded her 500th career block. She is now just one of four Rainbow Wahine in program history to reach the 1,000 kills at 500 block milestone. Joining Angelica Jungquist, Suzanne Agee, and Dietrich Collins 
in the elite club with 1,290 kills. Amber is now 12th all time in kills, passing Emily Hartong last week and now fourth in the record books with 508 blocks. Congratulations to Amber Igd. Ladies and gentlemen, while you're standing for the national anthem in Hawaii Ponoi, we'd like to direct your attention coming in to the court right now. The color guard detail on the military appreciation night provided by the University of Hawaii Air Force ROTC Detachment 175. Our singer this evening is nine years old, and at the age of five, she won the title of Tiny Miss Hawaii. Talented musician, singer, composer, who has performed internationally, plays the violin, piano, drums, and guitar. Last year, she launched her first single, I Love You, Dad. She's working on a film in Hollywood and won the front of the line audition pass at America's Got Talent, all this while maintaining her great and advanced academic records and serving the community. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kyra Pesebre.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as we retire the colors. Up. And ladies and gentlemen, please show your aloha for the University of Hawaii Air Force ROTC Detachment 175. Aloha ahi ahi. Good evening, everyone. The Rainbow Ohana welcomes you to Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii in majestic Manoa for tonight's Big West Conference women's volleyball match featuring the UC San Diego Tritons versus the reigning Big West champions, your Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. Introducing the UC San Diego Triton starting lineup at middle blocker, 6'1 junior from Fountain Valley, California. Number three, Juliet Bokor. And outside hitter, 6'2 junior from Tustin, California. Floor captain, number four, Ava McInnes. And outside hitter, 5'10 junior from Istanbul, Turkey. Number five, Sabine Karachahova. At center, six foot junior from Ventura, California. Number 14, Nevada Knowles. And middle blocker, 6'3", sophomore from Temecula, California. Number 15, Jasmine Saran. At Nibero, 5'10", senior from Cypress, California. Number 23, Natalie Rapetti. And at opposite, 6'1", freshman from Calabasas, California. Number 24, Lauren Brooker. The assistant coaches are Thiago Barbosa and Ashen Isinga. Associate head coach, Jay Loy. Head coach for the Tritons, Ricky Ludes. La, la, yeah. la, la, wait till I get my money right. I had a dream I could buy my way to heaven when I woke up with that on the necklace. I told God I'd be back in a second. The man is so hard that you act reckless. I guess the money should have changed them. I guess I should have forgot where I came from. And now the Hawaii lineup. And middle blocker, 6'3", senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Number three, Amber IGD. And outside hitter, six foot senior from Dublin, Ohio. Number six, Riley Wagner. And outside hitter, 5'11", freshman from Kafar Saba, Israel. Floor captain number nine, Tally Hakas. At center, 5'10", junior from Keller, Texas. Number 10, Kate Lang. And middle blocker, 6'2", senior from Twin Falls, Idaho. Number 12, Kennedy Evans. And Libero, 5'5", five, five, junior from Salt Lake, Oahu. Number 16, Taylor Ikenaga. And that opposite, six foot senior from San Diego, California. Number 18, Kendra Ham. A 
Assistant coaches Kaleo Baxter, Nick Castello, and Skylin Engelman. Head coach for your Rainbow Wahine, Robin Amo. It's a tight race at the top of the Big West women's volleyball standings as three teams vie for the second seed in the coveted first round bye in the conference tournament. Wrapping up an illustrious career in her final homestand is senior middle Amberite Jeannie, one of only four players in program history who has garnered 1,000 kills and 500 blocks. Coming up, senior weekend begins with a Big West battle between the Tritons of UC San Diego and the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Kanoa Lady sitting next to Chris McLaughlin. C Mac, take us through the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Well, UCSD has go out with a bang. Last match of the year for these Tritons. I expect they will play loose and free as there is no tomorrow. And for Hawaii, still finding a lineup. Robin Amo <clears throat> hopes the outside hitters will step up and play big tonight to hopefully earn a starting spot in tomorrow's night, senior night match against Long Beach State. Hawaii also playing with the second seed in the Big West Conference Tournament possibly in the backdrop as the Tritons get things started with a service error and Hawaii strikes first. The Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineups will be scrolling at the bottom of your screen. It has been a bit of a turnstile, if you will, with regard to the starting lineup for Hawaii throughout the season. And that middle set was intended for Jasmine Saran and the 6'3 sophomore from Telecula, California. She was unfortunately only able to send it wide. So a couple of points here to get things started for Hawaii in the first. Now, Hawaii getting lucky there, the first couple of mistakes by UC San Diego. Dump set to the back row. This is Sabiri Karajohova with the swing. Now Kendra Ham playing it back. Good cover there by Tali Hakas who gets the set and gets the kill. The reigning Big West Conference Freshman of the Week. That's the high jumping, hard hitting, Tally Hawkins that we saw in August and early September. Took a break for a while, I guess, and then uh, now she's reigniting the engines to be sure. Yeah, accumulated 22 kills, 15 digs, seven blocks, a couple of aces in the two matches on the road last week. Back bump set, here's Hawkins again. Goes through the block and down. So Hawaii rolling here early, C-Mac. And Haka says only she can do. And celebrates loud and long. <laughs> That's been a constant, that energy from Tally Hawkins. Tally Ikenaga with the long service run, but it comes to a close. Tally Ikenaga's arc this season has been interesting as well as she plays her way back into the starting libero spot about midway through the year. Ricky Ludi's in his 14th season, UC San Diego, the final year of a four-year transition as a full-fledged Division I member. As Kendra Ham tried to go line, misses it wide, and it's a point for the Tritons. Ricky Ludi says that, uh, you know, in his 14 years, most of them have been, he's had no scholarships at all to work with. He was Division II. The last four years, up to 12 scholarships. He feels like he's playing with a level playing field now. <laughs> yeah. No longer with the one hand tied behind the back, right? Yeah. Tip shot there by Lauren Brooker. Hawaii goes middle to Amber Igedi. The dig by Kata Jehova. Now Ava McInnes, top hitter for the Tritons, is dug up by Hawkes. And Riley Wagner hits it into the string. Oh, she was trying just too hard just to keep that ball in. She knew she didn't have a good run up. Set was a little deep on the 12 or 13 foot line. So she was trying to keep the ball in play. And uh, just caught it off her heel. Robin Amo, season six as head coach as that serve goes into the net. How rare is it for a team, particularly a team that is a perennial contender within its conference like Hawaii, 
How rare is it to see so much tweaking in the lineup this late in the year? You know, I've watched them for, what, 40 years now? I don't think I've ever seen this much tweaking, especially at the outside hitter position. Well, that was a great up by hand. And then Tyler Hopkins knew what to do with it. It was a great dig up there by Ham to keep the ball alive, and Hawkins finishes. I'll tell you, Cano, what's interesting is that Hawaii's got three pretty good outside hitters in there now, Wagner, Hawkins. Here is Hawkins. Hawkins and Ham. But you know what? On the bench is Gershing, who led them in kills yeah. against San Diego last time. And, uh, and Kalen Alexander, who was starting most of the year. How about that for having people in the closet to bring out? Yeah, that was Paula Gershing's first career start was against UCSD on the road. Here's Hawkes, the soft touch, pinballed around. It'll be returned. Advantage Hawaii. Slide goes to Igidi off the hands and out. Amber Igidi was honored. If you were with us during the starting intros, Honored prior to the match as being just the fourth Rainbow Wahine ever to surpass a thousand career kills and 500 career blocks. She surpassed the 500 block part just this past weekend on the road. She's in royal company to be sure with the likes of Suzanne Aggie, Angelica Junquist, who coached Amber her first year here. And Dietrich Collins, former national player of the other Broder Cup Award winner. So, very elite company that, uh, that Amber finds herself in now. Yeah, we'll have a little more on that later on in the broadcast as well. We're going to have a replay challenge from Ricky Ludies as Lauren Rooker's swing went out, but the Tritons believe there was a touch. Toughest replay to call, I think, is, is the touch call. CBC, it's hard to tell if any fingers get hit or touched or bend back. Very tough to see, but maybe Amber IGD got a little bit of it, but it would be a microscopic touch, if anything. Lauren Brooker, who doubles as a setter and an opposite hitter, just a freshman from Calabasas, California two-time Big West Conference Freshman of the Week. And yeah, anything you see there, maybe a little bit of a trajectory change off of IGD? Could be, yeah. That's the only, this, this is a good shot right here. Hmm. Looks like there's space there between IGD's hands and the ball, but we'll see again. That's the toughest replay to call. Now things uh, switched around here for us in the arena tonight. And this will also be the configuration going forward for men's volleyball when that gets going uh, on the other side of the uh, calendar change as the benches are now opposite our position. They have added courtside seating. And so you can see sort of at the uh, bottom portion of your screen, uh, just above the uh, lower graphic, C-Mac and I, much much lonelier here uh, along <laughs> Press Row, which is uh, now air quotes, not really a full row, just like a single table. Uh, you have now the print media members who are located in the stands, very similar to their positioning when the Clippers uh, held an exhibition game here. Uh, and so we don't quite have the same, dare we say, uh, access to these replay challenges. We can't necessarily see up close uh, what's happening in terms of the uh, review as it's happening in real time. So uh, things will be a little bit more of a mystery for us uh, as well as you guys at home. I will tell you this though, there are two people who are very happy where we are. And that is our two camera guys that sit down below and they worry about the coaches running in front of them all the time. They miss their shots. That's true. So I think they're tickled that we're on this side and there's no coaches running in front of them. Randy Rubinall, the R2, is going to have the call here, and he calls a touch. Dan Hiranaka is the R1. Kerwin Stenstrom and Matthew Sutsumi are the two line judges. And uh, you will also notice, watching from your position at home out there, uh, that the R1 is now on the near side. So uh, you see Dan Hiranaka atop the ladder. Uh, he is closest to us, and uh, we're going to have to somehow find ways to uh, maneuver our vision around him at times, but we return to some volleyball action and Paula Gershing into the match, getting a swing. Now McKinnis the other way, dug up by Gershing. 
Here's Igeni in the middle. And that was sizzling. Once again, even when the opposing team knows that Amber's going to get the set, you see the commit there by Juliet Bocor. Even, even when they know it's coming, still tough to stop Amber Igeni. She hits with such power. Well, Emily McDaniel, one of the top blockers in the conference and the leading blocker for the Tritons, did not make the trip here this week as the touch shot goes down for Katie Rapp. Katie Rapp, a six-foot sophomore from Rancho Mirage, California. But Emily McDaniel, who was averaging 1.3 blocks per set, that was tops on the team. Again, not making the trip, and so that's going to, you would assume, factor pretty heavily. Absolutely. Two-time All-Big West player. You know, she's just a solid, solid player for them. You know, she averages 1.3 blocks per set. I think that's number one in the league. And she's got 23 block solos. So a lot more will be resting on the shoulders of Ava McInnes, the top hitter for the Tritons. Here's Gershing up close and personal to that net. Now playing the other way, it is Rapp. And Rapp put a wrap on that sequence. 1.1 kills per set, hitting below 100 on the year. But she got that one in the sweet spot. That was a solid swing by Katie Rapp. Ripped that ball down the line. Even the great... Taylor Yukonaga couldn't pick that one up. Natalie Rapetti, the libero with the serve outside. Here's Kendra Ham, the block, able to provide some resistance. Same goes for the Hawaii block, still on the Triton side. Rap again, stuffed in roof. Kendra Ham saying, uh huh. <laughs> solid block over there on that right side. Kendra Ham at six feet, Kennedy Evans at six three. Kendra Ham, one of the six seniors, along with Kennedy Evans, who will be honored at the conclusion of tomorrow night's match against Long Beach State. If Hawaii is able to win tonight, that'll be a very important match as well. Hawkes laying the smack down. Oh, Hawkes, four kills already for Hawaii's 11 points. She personally has four of them. Yeah, four kills, seven swings, hitting 429. Tali Hawkes. Hawaii blocked out of touch. Back bump set, it's Hawkes. Wrist away, what a save there by Rapetti. Oh my goodness, the block smothering Katachurova's a try. Hawaii playing it back, quick set to Hawkes down the line, and she does it again. A handful of kills now for Tali. How about Rapetti digging on the other side? One pure dig and one cover of her hitter gave UCSD more opportunities to attack in that rally. Three straight rainbow points. Prompts a timeout from UCSD. The largest lead for the Rainbow Wahine in set one. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum OC16. Sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. There's nothing I love more than being a farmer. Every day I get to care for my sheep and feel connected to the land. Believe it or not, I think it makes me better at my other job, managing Bank of Hawaii's branches in Hilo. Because like farming, banking is all about caring for the needs of customers and businesses in our local community so they can grow and reach their fullest potential. I'm Steven Sylvester and I'm proud to work for a company that gave a farmer like me the chance to make a difference in my community. If new Heineken Silver was a riveting Viking saga. Last this west, the family tortured my first wife and stole my second favorite goat. Now you want to marry my daughter? Okay. <laughs> All the taste, no bitter endings. Heineken Silver, world-class light beer. Saturday, the Rainbow Warriors embark on their final road trip of the season to the Cowboy State. It's Hawaii versus Wyoming. Order it today on Spectrum Sports Pay-Per-View. Don't miss a second of the action. Watch Spectrum Sports on the go. The Spectrum News app has the local sports you love. 
and the news and weather that matter most to you. Download today on the App Store or Google Play. Thoughts on what we've seen so far here, C-Mac? Well, well, obviously the kill percentage is a huge difference. Why hitting 235, you see San Diego hitting 062. So why much more efficient in their offense. Kennedy Evans, efficient with her defense. Solo stuff, did it all by herself. Evans has yet to get a set, but you know, she more make up for it by getting a point for her team by blocking. She had a monster match in the first meeting with UCSD. Career high, 13 kills. Hit 522 as that one is sent long. No touch up front. And the lead continues to swell here for Hawaii. They've scored five straight. And now Riley Wagner, another senior. She and Amber Igidi feels like they've been around much longer <laughs> than the uh, allotted time as that one goes off the block. Another kill for Rapp. And tomorrow night's going to be very special for seniors like IGD and Wagner. They, the six seniors celebrate their final home match. Parents in town, friends in town. It's going to be a celebratory night to be sure. Evans got blocked. Good up there by Lang. Bump set. Hawkes blocked and roofed. Oh, that was a great block up there at the time. Especially, I, I think that Jasmine Saran got most of that. Yeah, I think Lauren Brooker was up there with her. Yep, solid block. So nine serving 14. Lang going backside. Ham, the tip shot. Saran going down to the floor for it. Now Hawaii to play it back. Ham, two blockers up. Gets her own cover. Hawkes on the other side. And we'll have a net violation against UCSD. Hawaii just staying with it on that one. Hawkins doing something interesting that time. She goes up as if she's going to make a powerful attack. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, holds her elbow up very high and just does a little wrist shot, like a little beach roll shot to the back row. And faked out the block. Block tried too hard to block and got caught up in the net. Brooker off the fingertips. Igini with the left hand. What else? It's Amber. She can do it all. Right hand, left hand, dig, ace. I mean, to be able to make that change in midair yeah. and then get the put down. 16 serving nine. And it's an ace. Dealt out of the deck there by Ikenaga. You know, when. Looks like uh, Lotus is to call another timeout. Hawaii off and running. They lead 17 to nine here in the first. I got me a paradise. It's your paradise too. Experience the beauty of the islands in a Honda hybrid with fuel efficiency and range that saves you money while keeping our Ina a paradise. Right now, kick off adventure in the Perfect Island Ride, a new Honda Hybrid, and get two years complimentary maintenance. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. Tell them Henry sent you. At Kaiser Permanente, our connected team approach allows us to understand the different aspects of your care. The level of communication we have, it's coordinated, multidisciplinary care. It's really the future of medicine. It's not just patient-centered care. It's patient-driven. We're not just treating conditions. Understanding the whole person builds trust and leads to better outcomes. We all work together to care for all that is you. Kaiser Permanente. The McRib is back for a good time, but true to form, it's not here for a long time. The McRib returns. Grab extra napkins, Hawaii. The McRib meal is back for just $8.99, only on the app. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Dodgers, Lakers, the World Surf League, the University of Hawaii, and the very best in high school sports and local programs. The Spectrum Networks in Hawaii. We've got you covered. Welcome back. Time now for the Hawaii Honda Dealers highlight reel and a lot of tally hawk is here sprinkled in early, C-Mac. 
Oh yeah, he had six kills, only two errors, hitting 364, doing it all kinds of ways. And how about her celebrations? So intense, so passionate. Well, she loves this game and loves to win and loves to get her kills. 5'11 freshman. Now, of course, she is an older freshman, having served multiple years in the Israeli army. But you wonder if she hit the proverbial freshman wall just a little bit earlier in the season as that set goes to Saran and she's able to find the floor. Now you're right, Kanoi. It was interesting how Tally just kind of went south there for a while for that mid part of the season. And what's really interesting is how she's bounced back. Yeah. When her heart is heaviest, she's playing best. Here she is again. Had to adjust to that set position. Great diving save again by Rapetti. Chance here for Hawaii. Aichini. Hammer time. For those who aren't familiar with Hammer Time, remember who sang that? Hammer Time? It was MC Hammer. Yes, MC Hammer. There you go. Good adjustment there on the outside by Ava McInnes. Right yeah. now, Hawaii hitting, hitting 240, and UC San Diego hitting 083. Again, the efficiency of each offense, big difference. Jackie Matias out there now for Hawaii, as well as Kaylin Alexander. Matias taking on the setting responsibilities. Hawkes blanketed. Juliet Bocor, 6'1", junior, playing the middle, basically playing in place of the missing Emily McDaniel. And she's able to get a stuff right there. That looked really good. She really penetrated well over the net. Triton showing some fight, but good luck stopping that one-on-one. -on -one. Amber Igini all over it. Number three got past number three that time. <laughs> as only Amber can do. Last time, there's the numbers from last time at San Diego. 10 kills, hit 368. Right now, she has five kills on six swings. She's hitting, oh, 833. <laughs> right side, tap across by Brooker. Now Gershing trying to return the favor, and she goes off of Brooker and out. What a smart play by Gershing that time. The set a little inside. Both blockers up on her. Why not wipe it off the outside blocker's hand? She had to sort of chase that down. Smart move by Gershing. So Gershing all smiles. Hawaii up eight. And now Talia Edmonds in and back to serve. How many times have we seen her start long runs this year? So it seems, even though we are on the eve of senior night, it is senior weekend, it seems Robin Amo very intent on making sure the seniors see the floor. She sees everything up there in that middle front. Amber wants to go on after her career here to go on and play professionally, and I think she'll make a, a USA national team run as well. Hawaii by nine. Brooker blocked. McKinnis will get a swing to save by Edmonds. Gershing has to center it, so a free ball coming over the net. Outside, it's McKinnis. The block was late, but a dig there by Ikenaga. Here's Alexander. And Gershing couldn't quite handle the ricochet. I'm surprised that GD didn't go up and get that one down. It's close to the net. Normally, she's the kind of, anything near the net, she's gonna find a way to put it down. So 13 serving 21 here in the first. Good pass there by Ikenaga. Backside, Alexander. Kaylin Alexander averaging 2.9 kills per set. Hitting 189 on the season. Another one of those players that has seen her time ebb and flow in and out of the lineup. At times, though, when she has had it cooking, C-Mac, she has been virtually unstoppable. Yeah, she's so physical and, and she is as physical as any player in the league, actually. That one hit long. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. So another kill here for Katie Rath. She has four kills on six swings. 
The rap usually only gets uh, one kill per set. She's got four times her usual. <laughs> Give her some credit. Has already matched her output from the entire match against Hawaii in the first meeting. Kennedy Evans. How good has she played down the stretch of this season? Oh man, she's what a turnaround this year. Completely. When she came from Utah, she was injured that first year, didn't didn't play much, and all of a sudden she's just lit it up. She's hitting like 360 over the last 12 matches, I believe. Save there by Alexander. Matias going out to Gershing. Again, Rapetti all over that dig. Down the line, Edmonds right there. Evans. Back row, the swing by McKinnis. Edmonds again with the scoop. Here's Alexander on the D set, hit it into the net. I like the way that Matias went to Alexander on the D set, because why he's got to develop that back row attack. What a better time in a row like that. Up by eight to try that shot. Matias also doing what Kate Lang appears to be doing here early in this first set, uh, going in a lot of different directions throughout a rally. Gershing got a good swing on it, but the block slowed it down. Karachuova, 5'10", junior from Istanbul, Turkey, third year with the program, averaging 2.1 kills per set, and she whacked that one. Well, that was one quality swing, I'm telling you. Just ripped it down the line. Lepetti with the serve. Oh, and Edmonds got handcuffed. Got caught in between. And that's three straight points for UC San Diego, and that prompts a Hawaii timeout. And Repetti picks up ace number 37 on the year. She leaves him in aces and in digs per set. Watch this, she just gives it a good whack. Ball's moving a lot. Edmonds had trouble handling that with her hands. Uh, Repetti, you mentioned team leader in aces. That's 37 on the year. This is a Triton squad that's second in the Big West Conference in aces. And in fact, they have more total aces than they have service errors on the season. That's very unusual. Usually it's the other way around, using more errors than aces. The largest lead for Hawaii was nine. They're up by a half dozen. A uh, reminder, we got some Rainbow Warrior football coming your way. Hawaii trying to make it three straight wins for the first time since 2019. They are in Laramie, Wyoming. 8.30 a.m. is when Spectrum Sports pay-per-view coverage will begin. And your buddy from Maui, Jordan Helley, will be there. And Jordan Helley will be on the play-by-play -play call with Rich Miano. They uh, have already sent me photos from this great restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, Cavalry Men Restaurant, which uh, used to be my dad's favorite when he oh. would travel to Laramie. Wow. And uh, they all sent me photos. It was like, you know, the usual Instagram feed. They sent me photos of all their dishes and these huge cuts of steak. And <laughs> I'm not jealous at all. No FOMO over here. Oh, you got plenty to do here for sure. <laughs> you have like, like nine <laughs> matches and, and games in 12 days. Out of the timeout. Back row, it's Alexander. A little wrist away action. You know, one thing I'm impressed with as far as Robin Amal is concerned, she's gotten 12 players into this first set. Who does that? They used to, most coaches wait until the second, third sets when there's big leads. Robin Amal giving her outside hitters who are really in a battle for a starting spot tomorrow night. She's given them all a chance here in this first set. So Aloha Ball here for Hawaii in set one. Riley Wagner doing the honors from behind the service line. Gonna be returned. It's gonna be the slide to Evans and she tips it down. What a savvy decision and maneuver there by Kennedy Evans. A couple of kills for her in that first set. Tali Hakas leading the way with six put downs. Amber Igidi right behind her with five. And Hawaii wins the first in efficient fashion, 25-17. What's up everybody? Cooking the holiday meal over here, making apple pie. All right. Babe, when you go along, can you get butter and flour?
Sometimes the holidays can get away from you. Luckily, our longs has everything we need. Make longs a part of your day. Being a military kid who moved a lot, Hawaii was the first place that really felt like home. Now that I have a family of my own, nothing's more precious than the time we get to spend together. That's why I love my job at Bank of Hawaii, where I get to develop digital tools that help families like mine spend less time banking and more time living. I'm Matt Pollard, and I want to help you live your happy. I'm 50 feet, and I'm Meha, and, and you're watching Spectre OC16. Makai Glass is Maui's premier glass studio and fine arts gallery. Artists Randy Schaefer, Justin Brown, and a team of amazingly talented glass makers and artisans create one-of-a-kind works of art in front of a studio audience. Choose from the hundreds of featured works in the gallery, or commission a custom sculpture or lighting fixture to fit your home. This unique gallery experience features Maui's finest works of art. Take home a true Maui treasure to be enjoyed for generations. Experience Makai Glass Maui in Hali'i Maile. Summer's almost pow, and it's time to go back to school, but I really need a car to get to campus and the beach, yeah? I didn't think I could afford one car, but then my friend went told me about this program from AutoSource called Carousel. They have a special membership program just for students, got me to a great ride for only $299 a month. And the best part? I can turn in the car when I go home for break, no need to worry about any long-term parking and no payments while I'm off island. And the membership fee, oh, so affordable. Covers all the service, maintenance, registration, and safety checks. Saturday, the tournament heats up, and it's a grudge match to move one step closer to the final. The first Hawaiian Bank Division I semifinals, only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Long's Drugs. The number is four. And that's the uh, amount of Rainbow Wahine all time to surpass 1,000 career kills and 500 career blocks. You mentioned some of the other names earlier, C-Mac. Dietra Collins, Suzanne Eggie, Angelica Yunquist, Amber Igini. That is a veritable Mount Rushmore of Rainbow Wahine greats. A great way to describe it, Kanoa. She's really in, really in uh, amazing company. Her First part of her five kills in the first set. And she averages around uh, around three and a half, so to get five is a nice number for her. Also picked up a block solo. Once again, the inspirational and physical leader of this team. Obviously, she will go down as one of the all-timers. And if you really want to tap into the possible headache that Robin Amo's experiencing, uh, imagine trying to replace Amber IGD here in future seasons. Mom is also in the house. Yes, Lena's here in the house. Yeah, how do you replace Amber? Well, Robin's got her, got some pretty good recruits up her sleeve. She actually has an Amber 2.0, she oh, says. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. As we get to action here in set two, and it is Brooker who sends it out. Good eye by Riley Weiner that time to watch that ball just go out. I think, when, I think when players make smart moves like that, they should get credit for the, for the point of having watched it go out. Little said that Saran pinballed around in return. Great action on the Hawaii side. And then the set goes to nowhere. Saran was running the slide. The opposite hitter was twisting inside. Nobody home. And another error gives Hawaii the point. But look at the action on the Rainbow Wahine side. Kate Wang with the big of the night so far. Giving it up. So two serving zero. Wang seven times center of the week. How incredible is that? Back bump set. Hawkins is dug up by Rapetti. Goes over the net, and Hawaii wasn't ready. You know, I think tomorrow night we'll see the other setter who's won the other weeks from, from Long Beach State. Yeah. Well, it was Long Beach State that swept Hawaii up in California earlier this season. Hawaii seemed discombobulated, uh, certainly. Didn't have much time to recoup 
as Hawkins just absolutely provides the thunder on that swing. It was just 24 hours later that Hawaii had to get on the floor against these Tritons, and boy, did that Hawaii team respond. They out hit the Tritons 388 to 190 in what was a sweep victory coming off of a sweep loss yeah. just the night earlier. Yeah, I know Zane Meyer was the, was the center of talking about from Long Beach State. The Meyer against Lang tomorrow night in the battle. Yeah, with some stuff on the line too. Here's Hawkes. She's got the hot hand, no doubt about it. That's now eight kills for Tally Hawkes. And you notice that Lang is finding a way to find the hot hitter? It's one of the things that great setters do. Hawkes Shunk, she, she's got some diversity. She's got what they call a wide fan. She can go line, she can go four to four, cross court, tight. Okay, nice cross court right there. DK Naga had it played perfectly. Now Kendra Ham got it dug up. Brooker is able to go off the block and down. And Brooker, nice job of just hitting high and hard, catching a piece of it. And that time, Kendra Ham was coming over to get a possible tip from Brooker. Here's Igedi. Oh, good dig right there by Saran. But from the back row, it is hit by Hannah Jehovah into the net. Well, it's a bonus when you get one of your middle blockers to make a dig like that, especially on a dig from, from one of the, the conference's best players. Amber just unloaded there, and Saran popped it right up. Five serving two here in the second, and it's an ace. Courtesy Kendra Ham. What a great story for Ham, coming from Cal Poly, and then uh, eventually ending up in Hawaii, given three solid years. And has filled all kinds of different roles for Hawaii in her time in Manoa. She really has been kind of a jack of all trades. She can almost play any position. She's played almost all the positions. Yeah. Good swing there by Lauren Brooker out of Marymount High School. Has four brothers. One of the brothers, Zach, played basketball at USC. Another brother, Alex, played lacrosse at USC. What a dig by Rapetti. It gets repetitive talking about how good she is defensively. That time, though, Hawk was able to drop it right in front of her for her ninth put down of the match. Sweet indeed, Tally Hawkus. Was Hawkus having fun or what? How about that ear to ear smile? She's just loving it. Nine kills, hitting 333. <laughs> Couple of digs now. Repositions herself behind the service line. Cross court bump set, wrap, going high hands. Katie Rapp still leading the way offensively for the Tritons. She's got five kills. That was a nice bump set from Brooker that time. Rapp just unloading. She's, she's taking some solid swings tonight. Leads all attackers. And Brooker second with three kills. Overpass. And easy pickings for Kata Jehovah, but she has to give the assist to Ava McInnes on the serve. I was asking Ricky Looney, he's, hey, you got a couple foreigners on here and look pretty good. He said, that's all we can have. We're only allowed to, the rest have to be California in-state players. Behind the head set that time for IGD, couldn't get it down. Kata Jehovah dug up by Ike Naga, and then Lang trying to dump it over on to Rapetti with the quick reaction. Lang, Igedi, the tip. Just found the open floor. How about her vision? She just sees out of the corner of her eye, there's two blockers up on her, four hands. If she takes a swing, it's likely she'll get blocked. So instead, she tips to the open area. And even the great digging Rapetti can't get there. Six kills, 10 attempts, no errors here for Amber Igedi. Outside, Kata Jehovah blocked. McKinnis doing whatever she can to keep it alive. Kata Jehovah a second time, dug up by Gershing. Quick reset, Gershing. Oh boy, that had some pop on it. 
but it'll be returned. Kata Jehovah, the swing, gets the point for the Tritons. Kata Jehovah, what a swing. Only one on one on the outside, I think. I'm not sure how only one blocker was up. I think Evans was thinking the ball was going in the other direction, I guess. So six serving eight here in the second. Gershing had the pass, got the set. It'll be returned though, McInnes free, hands it over. Kennedy Evans got dug up by Rapetti, goes off of the scoreboard above. It can continue to be played on the UCSD side. Now Gershing slowed down by the block. There's Rapetti again. Wrapped the tip, tipped back by Evans. Outside, Kata Jehovah ends it again. Kata Jehovah with four kills and UCSD within one. She averages a, a couple of kills per set. Only hits a, a, a 191 on the year. Tonight, she's only hitting a buck, uh, buck 11, so she's not quite up to her kill percentage, but she's bringing some firepower here in this second set. Had one of her best matches in her career against Hawaii a couple of seasons ago. 17 kills, 57 attempts. Wow. Here's Gershing on the high ball bump set. Pinballed around, Kata Jehovah again gets the swing. He can knock out the dig. Gershing the tip. Sniffed out by Brooker. Kata Jehovah finds the floor again. Oh, she knows how to hit hard. And she knows how to pull the trigger and hit soft in front of the outstretched arms of the diggers. Great shot by Kata Jehovah. And how about that back set by Rapetti? But he does a little bit of everything, doesn't she? She can hand set, she can bump set, great digger. Tied for the first time here. Rap. The dig there in the back row by Hawaii, and then Gershing trying to take line, misses wide, and the Tritons jump in front. They lead for the first time here in this match after four straight points, and we have just seen this story far too often this season for Hawaii. They find themselves stuck in these rotations. And some of the errors, some of the miscues just continue to mount. Wagner, the tip, and that one got down. And Wagner came in for Gershing to uh, Robin Amo put um, in that substitution. I'm not sure why, because Gershing's really hitting the ball pretty well, but she wasn't scoring, so. She put Wagner back in, and uh, my guess is that's not the last we'll see of Paul Gershing tonight. She'll get back in. Kate Lang serves it into the net. Well, you got to give the Tritons credit. Ricky Ludes has had so much success with this program in its previous Division II status. And it was just a matter of time. You know, they're going to get untracked. They are starting to show some signs. Every year in this transition, they have gotten better and better. They went from 14 and 18 as an overall record last year. They're now 17 and 12 coming into this match. Nine and eight and in fifth place in the Big West Conference. Uh, they're on the come up. There's no denying that. Absolutely. You know, he said that he's got some eyes on some some pretty good recruits to fill, uh, fill in the gaps for the seniors that are graduating. So he's excited about that. Um, one of, he said one of the biggest challenges for him is, is that when the first portal opens up in December, it's tough for him to even go there because he can't get players to transfer in at the semester. So he can't train the, the, you know, the new, new recruits in the spring when all the, the rest of the portal people are getting training with their new school in the spring. So tied at 11 here in set two. Hawaii took the first 25-17. P.K. Naga with the serve. Good pass there, McInnes. And Brooker. Pretty fine looking freshman, huh? Five kills now for the opposite slash setter for UC San Diego. She's a setter who gets to hit in the front row and loves it. Two-time Big West freshman of the week. She made all tourney in two of their tournaments this year. 
She's hitting 308 in this match. Amber Angini is hitting over 600. And that's her seventh kill. Another a ho hum Amber Knight. <laughs> Tied for the fifth time here in the second. Here's Brooker, the tip. Ike Naga, what an effort. McKinnis on the other side, popped up by Hakas. Ike Naga chases it down. The crowd loving it. McKinnis off the block. Lang gonna go slide. Igidi the tip. Rapetti the pancake. Brooker is dug up by Wagner. What a rally. Igidi off the block. There's Rapetti again. Free ball coming over the net. Can Hawaii cash it in? Lang, Igidi. The UCSD defense led by Natalie Rapetti. They just kept the ball alive, kept the ball from hitting the ground. So many good plays, one after another. And here's Taylor Kanaka doing her own version of what Rapetti was doing on the other side. And of course, Amber Igedi, the terminator of every rally, right? Uh, that's what this crowd, that's what these fans come for, or for rallies like that and effort like what you saw on the Hawaii side of the net right there. Amber Igedi's numbers, well, per usual. <laughs> Fantastic. Hawaii leading by one. At Taco Bell Hawaii, the shredded Kahlua pork, grilled stuffed burrito, double XL quesadilla, and nachos bel grande are back. Spread the word, Kahlua pork is back, only at Taco Bell Hawaii. Let's get it. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. Plus America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR, plus zero payments for 90 days, plus 1,000 bonus cash on the Santa Fe. See your Hawaii Hyundai dealers. If new Heineken Silver was a riveting Viking saga. Last this west, the family tortured my first wife and stole my second favorite goat. Now do you want to marry my daughter? Okay. <laughs> All the taste, no bitter endings. Heineken Silver, world-class light beer. Welcome back after that UCSD timeout. Hawaii, once again in front here in the second, 13 serving 12. Hitting 240 in this second compared to 276 for the Tritons. And how about the one-handed set from Nevada Knowles to the other setter, acting as an opposite there on that play, Lauren Brooker. That was a pretty sweet little set, wasn't it? Came out clean. Came out in the right spot where Brooker could take a swing at it. Nevada Knowles transfer from Ventura College. Hails from Ventura, California. There's the middle set, and Amber Igidi was all over Sara Da Silva. Now Hawkes, big swing. Got a Jehovah with the save outside. It's McKinnis. Forget about it. Amber Igidi returns it to sender. Wow. Amber Igidi just continues to roam across the net as if it's her territory and hers alone. Serve flattened out a little bit off the palm of Hawkes. Sails out, so we're tied yet again. This is the kind of a set that Robin Amo likes. She wants to see her team pushed, you know, for more night. She doesn't want us to go through these, these three sets easily. She'd love to see her team pushed to prepare for what she knows is going to be a very difficult match tomorrow night. And how about that shot? Yeah, one of the better ones that you'll see from Riley Wagner going cross-court and down. 
Got an old fan club up there. That was a really nice move by Ryder. A little wrist away shot. Almost hit the 10 foot line on the other side. So here's Amber Igedi with a chance to serve. You always talk about it, C-Mac. She wants to get the serve in because she likes to play herself that's, a little back row. That's exactly right. So we'll see her make many service errors, except there, oh, that ball was out. Out of Jehovah block back, it's her own cover. On the other side, it's wrap. Gets it into the antenna. So Hawaii up two. Ricky Ludis happens to also be one of the great men's players. Oh, unbelievable. Got his number retired at UCLA, number 11. That's Same incredible. Same number that Robin Amo used to wear. Kata <laughs> Jehovah unleashed on that one. What a dig there by Ham. But Hawaii couldn't convert. So huh. Deary Kata Jehovah just pummeling the volleyball right now on any set that comes her way. As Talia Edmonds checks back into the match for Hawaii. Saran in the front row at the middle position on the UCSD side. Outside Wagner over the block, sliding save Brooker. Wrap dug up by Edmonds. And then over on two goes Lang, but she missed the floor wide. Ooh, not a bad idea. It was wide open. She set it a little bit too far, but not a bad idea. I like seeing the setters on either side be aggressive and prove that they can be an offensive threat. Lang gonna go to Wagner, and she is able to go off the block and down. It was the Saran wrap block attempt on the other side for UCSD. I get it. Another Kanoa Leahy pun out of nowhere. <laughs> the Saran wrap. Well, I mean, it was, you know, you had Katie Rapp at the pin, and you had Jasmine Saran in the middle. That's only watch you'll use, say, Saran Rapp. I'm, I'm just describing the action, yeah. Z-Mac. <laughs> Don't read too far into it. <laughs> oh, my. 17 all in a second. This is, some, this is some good stuff going on now in front of a pretty good crowd on a Friday night. And tomorrow night will get even bigger. Yeah, it's going to be a good one tomorrow. Outside, here's Ham. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. And Hawaii gets the point. Not much in the way of an argument from the UCSD side. I thought it was pretty obvious. I thought Dan Hironaka was going to make that call himself. But he turned to the linesman and asked for help. Because it was only like three feet away from his eyeballs. So I thought he was going to call it. <laughs> Wagner the serve. Nose goes middle and that's Saran. Jasmine Saran, 6'3", sophomore from Temecula, California. Averaging 1.7 kills per set, hitting 303 on the year. Actually the team leader in total blocks, but coming into this match behind the missing Emily McDaniel in blocks per set. And she's taking medical and her grad courses. She wants to be a doctor someday. Meanwhile, Hawaii, a little bit of struggles on the serve, and UCSD leapfrogs ahead. Third lead change of this second set. Things not coming easy for Hawaii after what appeared to be an easy set one. How deep do Pizza Hut's roots run in Hawaii? Through all the decades, we know what our island ohana love. Great taste at an even better price like our large one-topping carry-out pizza for just $14.99. You choose your favorite topping, pepperoni, olives, sausage, or any other single topping. Our $14.99 large one-topping pizza. Order online and carry one out today, only at Hawaii Pizza Hut. Here's the dream. Never stop doing what you love. The choices you make now can keep the dream alive tomorrow. So you can live your life your way. We're here to help with a personalized approach to a healthier you. This is me. Hawaii Pacific Health. Mountain to the ocean, from Melbourne to the leeward side. 
dedicated to the people of Hawaii. Hawaiian Airlines, Hawaii flies with us. Welcome back, Lauren Brooker has really asserted herself here in this match with a bunch of all-around statistics, c -Mac. Yeah, she's just doing all she's setting. You have the attacking there on the right side. So unusual to see these, these setters attacking in the front row. So a true 6-2 being played by Ricky Ludis. I heard the men's volleyball team for Hawaii might be running the same kind of a system. Interesting. Evans. Couldn't get it down. Great scramble play by the Tritons. Here's Hawkus off the block. Advantage UCSD outside. McInnes. Right there is Wagner. Lang going the opposite way. Ham off the block and down. And Hawaii ties it up in 19. Oh, that was a very interesting choice of shots there. Kendraham could have gone cross court pretty easily, but she chose to tool it off that one blocker and was successful. Brooker. Well, we just highlighted her and she sends it out. No touch. Did the Meanwhile, broadcasters jinx? <laughs> possibly. Meanwhile, Amber Igidi stumbled down to the floor at the end of that play, so uh, she seems to be okay. That's always scary when you see one of those blockers yeah. coming down and falling to the floor. Here's Saran. Great dig by Kate Lang, but for Hawaii, Hawkus unable to play it off of the net. So tied at 20. And Saran just being so steady. Four kills against Long Beach State, but hit 077. Eyeball bump set. Hawkus just trying to shove it through that block. Brooker doing the same. It'll stay on the Hawaii side. Here's Hawkins again, one-on-one -on -one block challenge. Saran the dig, Brooker cross court and wide. Once again, Saran playing some good back row. Come up with another dig and give her a chance, another, and her team, another chance of a swing. Unfortunately, that swing went out. It is a race down the home stretch here in this second set. Is this the red zone you call it? <laughs> Well, those last few yards before the goal line, always the toughest. The last few points at the end of a set, always the toughest, particularly with an ill-timed service error. And we're tied again. And here comes Kaylin Alexander coming in to try to help things out offensively. Still got IGD up front, so Hawaii still got some good point scorers in the front line right now to go between 21 and 25. Even better yet, they can get a, a freebie right there with a serve into the net. So each side giving a free point in back-to-back -back moments. And now Talia Edmonds in and back to serve. Here's Rapp. Looked like she jumped a little early, but had some hang time there. The dig by Matias. Now Alexander is dug up. Rapetti, you saw her straddling the line there, trying to avoid the penalty. Was able to put up a nectar for Brooker. She really did. Nice job by Rapetti there to keep from violating, stepping inside that three meter line and setting with her hands. You're, you're just balancing ever so slightly. And was a great swing down the line by McInnes. Yeah, make that Ava McInnes with the kill or tie at 22. And then McInnes sends it out. Go figure. Maybe the big crowd, maybe a little nervousness going on with the, with all this, uh, it's the biggest crowd they've played in front of all year. 23 serving 22. Outside, Kata Jehovah through the block and down when they needed it most. She delivers with her seventh kill. And here is the best point scoring server for the Tritons. Forces the overpass. Oh, a great reaction by Alexander to keep it alive. Kata Jehovah dug up by Ikenaga. Matias outside Wagner. 
Rapetti on the dig. That is her 16th save of the match. Meanwhile, McInnes short arms it. Well, what a dig by Rapetti once again to keep the Tritons alive in the rally. And a great reaction earlier in the sequence. Kaylin Alexander, after the overpass, was able to keep that play alive just long enough for Hawaii to get the point. Yeah, one of the things I like about Rapetti is when she has hard driven balls hit at her, she doesn't dig it back over the net. 90% of the time, she's keeping the ball on her own side and getting the red face at the same time. She's just, look at yeah, that. Yeah. She's been working hard. Maximum effort. Yes. We'll take a look at some of the work put in by Natalie Rapetti. Another dig. See how she lays herself out flat, keeps the ball on her own side of the court every time so that her team can get another swing out. Another unbelievable dig. Looks like a Rapetti dig show here. <laughs> and Greg Sir picks up an ace as well. The only ace of the match so far for the Tritons. Interestingly enough, seven service errors for UCSD. And that's not the ratio they're used to. They're used to having a one-to-one -one ratio, or even better, but more aces than errors. All right, let's send it over to Ryan. What's up? Hey, thanks, Gonna well, On the Hawaii sideline, Coach Robin Amo really talking to her defense, really trying to position them coming out of this timeout, knowing how important this is. She really wants her blockers to line up on the outside pin. Jacqueline Matias actually stuck in the front row, and Kaylin Alexander is serving. So they're not going for the double sub. They're leaving their subs in here for this last point. Back over to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Alexander serving. 20 service aces on the year. Aloha ball for the Rainbow Wahine here in set two. Outside, Kata Jehovah. And we're going to play extras here in the second C-Mac. Kata Jehovah was looking for the smallest blocker she could find, and that was Matias. I think she went either over her or just inside. We'll see if there's going to be a substitution by Hawaii here. So 24 all, the crowd ramping up the noise. Overpass. Saran got it done. And Saran's got to thank Nevada Noel for that tough serve that forced the overpass. Timeout, Robin Amo. Hawaii has to talk it over. And it's just amazing how Hawaii finds itself in these peaks and valleys throughout the course of a match. They can look like world beaters in one set and then the next set, things completely come off the rails. That hasn't necessarily been the case here, but some of the miscues just come at inopportune times and they tend to mount one after the other. Exactly, and I, I think that's one of the things that's frustrated the, the coaching staff is that they, they've been, there have been so many peaks and valleys within a match. But uh, you look at the huddle right there, and you look at Telly Hawkins right there cheering everybody on. Amber IG will probably say something right there. There she goes talking right now. She's one of the vocal leaders, and they're probably saying something like, you know what, we can get this 25th point, we'll be good. And we'll get the next two for sure. Something positive like that. Well, while we have a break in the action, let's check back in with Ryan. What's up? Well, coming out of that last time out, interesting enough, Hawaii did not decide to do that double sub with, uh, as we see, Kate Lang and Kendra Ham now coming into the match. Robin Amol deciding, coming out last time, she was going to leave Alexander Matias in. Now she's making this double sub, hoping for a bigger block here coming up, knowing that uh, San Diego is probably going to set this left side again. They want Ham going all the way out on the line, really stressing that block. But interesting, they didn't do this double sub earlier. I I'm not sure why the coaching staff took some time talking about that, but now they're deciding to make the sub back. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. So it went from Aloha Ball for Hawaii a couple of moments ago to Aloha Ball here in the second for UCSD. Lang, Evans, and we're tied again. And a good pass by Ikenaga to allow Kate Lang to set all three attackers in the front row. Now Hawaii with Ham in the front, Evans in the front. 
And Tally Hawkins, the hot hitter in the first set, she's back in. She's been kind of quiet this set, only nine kills, only one kill, no, no kills this set. Middle set, that's Saran. And Wagner couldn't conjure up the save along the back line. Sorry, Hawkins has three, three kills this set. She had six the first. Another set point for the Tritons. And it's Kata Jehovah who will serve. She for sure has played well in the second set. Five kills. Twenty-six serving twenty-five. Evans fields it. Right side, it's Ham cross court and in. Clutch swing there by the senior. That was one clutch swing. She had two blockers up. She had to go high and hard with a lot of top spin. And it just over caught a Jehovah and got the point. Tied again. How about for the 18th time wow. we are tied? Outside McKinnis, what a save, he came now go over the net and down. And it's going to be a Hawaii point. It looked like Igidi came into the net, or somebody came into the net, but they're calling it a Hawaii point right now. I thought Igidi hit the net. And Ricky Ludi is arguing that that ball was on the UCSD side when Igidi touched it anyway. And so he's trying to relay the information to his floor captain, Ava McInnes, to go over and talk to Dan here and not going to argue the point. And so now Tally Hawkins is going to go over and listen in. I'd be surprised if Lutis doesn't pull out the challenge card. Well, he's talking to Randy Rubinall right now. Let's take a look here from this angle. Let's see, she touches it right above the right above the tape, which is legal. And it looked like it was not oh. touched by Igidi, but was touched on the other side right. by a UCSD player. Yep. Don't pull out the challenge card, Ludies. You know, oh, no. in the old configuration, you had a chance of maybe letting <laughs> them know, but now that they're across the way, there's no chance. Right. And yeah, this swing there coming into the net. Ava McInnes. You know, I, I don't think that's the, the Amber Igidi tap down from, from the other side is challengeable. When the ball's 50-50 above the net, I don't think it's a challengeable call. Well, they can challenge the net violation. Correct. Which is what the call officially was on the floor. Well, that part can't be challenged. I don't think that was illegal anyway. But there is the net violation, and it's not Amber Igidi. Oh, it's right there. As you said, it's McInnes. Pretty obvious call. And this is going to be upheld, I think. <laughs> Hawaii point. And it once again becomes Aloha ball for the Rainbow Wahine. So, set point, Tele Ikenaga to serve. Gets it in. Right side, Brooker. And it just keeps going. Not a bad hitter for a setter, huh, Dr. Kanoa? <laughs> not a bad hitter. And not a bad setter for a hitter. That's right. Nice set from Nevada Knowles. Good pass that time by Wagner, right side. Ham gets it done. Oh, they were paying a lot of attention to Amber Igidi that time. And once again, Ham is left with a one on zero attack position. And it'll be Ham serving. Four kills for Ham. And an ace. Make that her second ace of the match, and Hawaii wins 
in extras in the second. 29-27. And they lead two sets to none. And on the penultimate night of the regular season home schedule, the Rainbow Wahine will have a chance to crack open the Varun closet. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum OC16. Sponsored by your Hawaii Honda dealers. I got me a paradise. It's your paradise too. Experience the beauty of the islands in a Honda hybrid with fuel efficiency and range that saves you money while keeping our Aina a paradise. Right now, kick off adventure in the perfect island ride, a new Honda hybrid, and get two years complimentary maintenance. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. Tell him Henry sent you. If new Heineken Silver was a riveting Viking saga. Lost this west. The family tortured my first wife and stole my second favorite goat. Now you want to marry my daughter. Okay. <laughs> All the taste, no bitter endings. Heineken Silver, world-class light beer. Hey, how's it? I'm Lanai, and you're watching Spectrum OC16. Technology at 15 Craigside makes life easier, safer, and keeps us connected. How are you guys doing this morning? Internet speed in this building is able to handle the downloads and capacity requirements of my office. The technical support that's provided by the IT department is wonderful. They're available to all residents for any troubleshooting needs and one-on-one -on -one training. Voice technology allows us to ask about 15 Craigside's community events, dining, and activities. There's always something fun to do. My name is Don Mizurashi. I'm the Assistant Manager of Human Resources here at Olelo Community Media. Simplicity HR by Altris has made my life so much easier. We have this whole team dedicated to timesheets, to running our payroll, and it makes it a lot easier because you're not talking to the mainland. You're talking to somebody here locally that understands the culture of your business, and they're so helpful. They're always willing to go above and beyond. They're the best. Saturday, Hawaii looks to send off its seniors with a win in the regular season finale against Long Beach State. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. Intermission here at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center in set one. Hawaii led from start to finish in the second set. They got pushed but pulled out a 29-27 victory. Hawaii up two sets and none to serve to set to start set number three. Coming up next. The McRib is back for a good time, but true to form, it's not here for a long time. The McRib returns. Grab extra napkins, Hawaii. The McRib meal is back for just $8.99, only on the app. Bounced from one doctor to the next. Did they even send my lab work? Wait, was I supposed to bring that? Then there's the forms, the bills, the not a bills, the... Healthcare can get a whole lot easier when your medical records, care, and coverage are in one place. At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together for all that is you. At Spectrum News, we're striving to help inform your community, providing the latest news from journalists right here in Hawaii. The local sports you love and the local news and weather that matter most to you. Download the Spectrum News app, exclusively for Spectrum customers, your community connection. All right, local people, I'm Champ, and you're watching Spectrum OC16. So you're telling me this one-size-fits-all network upgrade is the best you guys can do? Better than that. It's the only thing we do. That's how we know it's right for you. Aye, aye, aye. Is this what I said? No, I think you were okay. Ah! I think that's a yes. We get it. Ask for the technology you need, and they call you unreasonable. We call you something else. Our kind of client. So go ahead. Be unreasonable. At JN Group, we believe life could be a whole lot sweeter if you never pump gas again. Life sounds like... I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. 
It's time to go electric, and nobody has more EVs in stock than JN Group. You won't just save thousands on your new EV. You'll save so much more because you'll never pay at the pump again. Embrace the future today at JN Group. Test drive an EV, and you'll agree. Now this is living. Time now for the Pizza Hut Match statistics, delivered hot and fresh. C-Mac, what do you see? Well, it kills about even. Look at the official kill efficiency by Hawaii, 275 to 191 for UC San Diego. Blocking about even, digs, Hawaii with five more. Then aces to errors. Uh, very unusual statistic for San Diego. Normally they have more aces than errors, so the one and seven ratio is not uh, not normal at all. But you know, I'll tell you one thing that's not on there is Rapetti's digs. Yeah. She's got 17 in two sets. Normally she would have about six around this time. She's got triple that amount. Really putting on a great show in the back row. Yeah, it was one of those second sets that really could have gone either way. What did it say about Hawaii to be able to pull it out after uh, all of that back and forth action? Well, that was a good sign. If we're wondering whether Hawaii was going to find a lineup again. You know, we've talked about that, and one of the keys to the game was, could they find a lineup? Well, I think Robin Amoa is still searching, and I think she's discovering more and more about her outside hitting core as the night progresses. So set three now underway. Lang goes middle, and Kennedy Evans got all of it. Evans yet to make an error tonight, her fourth kill in 10 tries. Hitting the O, a mere 400 so far. And that's the way to get things started emphatically here in the third. Taylor Ikenaga now to serve. Outside, Brooker. Block slowed it down, Kate Lang had the dig, here's Ham. Oh, the block was all over and Saran got the gist, jumping up next to Brooker. Yeah, that was really good block. <laughs> Saran hustling to the outside, gets there, four hands across, penetrating over the net, low and tight. And they get rewarded for their hustle play. Playing goes to Igini. And she put the boom on it. A blasty blast from Amber. We have some props there. Sarah Karahova hustling clear to the end of the arena to run that one down. Amber IGD into double figures, 10 kills, no errors. And then McInnes sends it long, no touch. It's a point for Hawaii. I think McInnes and some of the Tritons thought that was in. It wasn't out by much, but I'm not, I'm not sure it's worth a challenge at 3-1 in the first. Good point. Outside, here's McInnes. That one was in. I think we can all be sure of that. Yeah. No review necessary. Ava McInnes has been kind of quiet. Here, let's, previous play, let's see how close this one was. Oh, uh, yeah, it probably would have been ruled out in the challenge. Hawkes, that pass tight to the net. Lang able to go one easy to Amber who crushed it. So for the people who wanted to see something different tonight, we haven't seen this year, a back one set from Kate Lang <laughs> to Amber Igini with no blockers up. Just how you draw it up? Never a dull moment. And Brooker goes off the block. Hawaii will play it back. Bump set. Wagner hits it out. What a career Riley Wagner's had. Former Ohio Gatorade Player of the Year back in 2018. Says in the media guide she's enjoyed every minute of her time here at the University of Hawaii. It's been a chemistry major, you know, part of the time. So Did you know your of, periodic tables? Is that you knew that too? In chemistry major, so few of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, she actually has a double major, right? Chemistry and also uh, women, gender, and sexuality studies. Yeah. And is uh, on pace to graduate in the spring of 2024. And that's kind of what's... I think there'll be a master's degree in there somewhere. I'm well, not sure. That's what's interesting about the COVID 
situation with a lot of these players, right? Riley Wagner and Amber Igedi and several of the senior classes. Igedi off of one foot gets it down. Is they were granted so much extra time that you have a fleet of student athletes from this era yep. that are extremely accomplished in the classroom. Exactly. And, and, if, and how many of them went to another school to get a master's degree? Hawaii has three yeah. getting master's degree on their team right now. Oh, great job by Hawaii to keep it off the floor. Outside, it is wrapped. Wrap with kill number six. She's been steady on the outside, didn't make many errors. McKinnis, what a serve, what a pass by Edmonds over on two goes Lang. And even Rapetti, who was springing into action, couldn't quite scoop it up. Lang saw the opening tight pass to the net. Petty got a hand on it, though, I gotta give her credit. That was a heck of a pass by Edmonds, had to lay out, nothing was falling off of a table. Outside. Left-handed over by Karajuhova, and Hawaii gets it over, but only for a moment. That was hitting lines right there for Katie Rapp. You know, you know the, the, Hawaii does a pretty good job keeping the ball off the floor, but getting a lot of credit to Rapp there for hitting that ball, not hitting the net. It was very tight. Back row said that's McKinnis. Sends it out, no touch. Hawaii up two. Hawaii took the first set 25 17. Second set went into extra time. And Hawaii, after the two teams traded blows, each having a side to end that second set, they would come away with a 29 27. Outside, Kata Jehovah tools the block. That's now kill number nine for Kata Jehovah. Only two hitting errors in this match. She's really been steady. A junior from Istanbul, Turkey. Nevada Knowles now to serve. Heavens. Oh, what a pass from Roddy Wagner. That was a very difficult serve. She handled it up high to her right and put it right on the money for Kate Lang. Evans, five kills, hitting 455. He can noggin now to serve. Eight serving six here in the third. And nearly an ace. Igedi. Oh, my goodness. That was a detonation. Only one blocker up, and if Amber's only got one blocker, it's pretty much lights out. She'll finish that pretty much every time. She went nuclear on that one. Yeah. Caught a Jehovah. A little extra chili pepper water on that swing, too. And she averages a couple of kills per set. She's also a really good digger. She had number two in digging for the team with two and a half with digs per set. And she's having a match. 10 kills hitting 276. Hygiene hung up in the air for a moment. Free ball coming over. Lang with options. Backside it's Am and a solo block. Ava McKinnis who came into this match with 10 solo stuffs on the season. Ham's wishing she had that one back. She goes down the line. Cross court was wide open. Good choice there by Lang, setting up the one-on-one. -on -one. Yep, absolutely. Hygiene off of the one-handed set, but Saran was waiting. And that's three straight points for the Tritons. We're tied at nine. Saran was a Big West Conference Defensive Player of the Week back in October. Averaged 2.1 blocks per set in a pair of matches against Fullerton and Irvine. And that time, Kendra Ham makes it happen. Good swing by Ham that time. She just rattled the block 
Got it through with enough power to get it down. She was facing four hands across, but it managed a way to get it through. McInnes the tip. Well, the Hawaii servers did their job. They tried to serve it short to get McInnes, you know, the, the lead attacker for San Diego for most of almost all of the year. Get her to come up to the 10 foot line, have to pass it, and then have to retreat to get a good approach. They did their job, but then uh, McInnes got the last word on the smart shot. The two subs come over for Hawaii in Hakas and Matias. Matias gonna go back to tally. And what is her tally in kills? It's now 10. Looks she's gonna get a rest in the back row now with Talia Edmonds coming in. So the two road matches where Hawkes had 11 kills in each of those, now 10 kills here in this one, that's three straight. She's on a run. And double figures. Talia Edmonds serves it into the net. I think the expression on the face of Robin almost says it all. <laughs> but the service error coming back the other way gives it right back to Hawaii. And also no added words necessary when you see Ricky Ludis. That's right. Let the pictures do the talking. Twelve, seven, eleven. Wrap. That was a big swing. The dig there by Igidi. The set by Evans, and the kill by Wagner. So you have the dig by the middle, the set by the other middle, and you have the serve by another middle. By the first middle, right there. There's the dig from Igidi. There's a set from Kennedy Evans. <laughs> Positionless volleyball. <laughs> Soft touched it though, second crack at it, more of a crack. Somehow Wagner able to punch it up. Alexander hits it out. Was there a touch? No touch. How about the bump set by Hygiene across to Wagner? That's a difficult set. And somehow Amber manages to, to do that. You know, she's a great bump setter. She just sets well with her hands actually pretty well. And uh, obviously a good digger. Nick Costello offering up some advice. Matias gonna go middle to Evans. They've really started to form a little chemistry, huh? Yeah, I think, you know, Jackie's becoming more and more comfortable, you know, giving Kate Lang a rest or just becoming comfortable, becoming the setter number two and doing a great job of it. She's now gonna play in the front row. How did you hold that dug up by Ikenaga? Here's Alexander from the back row. And there's Rapetti again. And then the wrist away shot by McKinnis. That was deadly. You know, calling Rapetti's name out is getting, getting a little repetitive, don't you think? <laughs> and I'm just going to, it's just a little like, like every other play. It's, yeah. it's Rapetti, Rapetti, Rapetti. Mm -hmm. Just thought I'd throw that out there. No, you got surround wrapping. That, that's so well gotta, done. That's, that's, that's classic Chris right there. Classic c -Man. Not Not as good as c -Man. That was the best one. Over on two goes Matias. Calling her own number and getting Hawaii to 15 first in the third. Rainbow Wahine by a couple here in set three. If new Heineken Silver was a riveting Viking saga. Gosh, this worst. Your family tortured my first wife and stole my second favorite goat. Now you want to marry my daughter. Okay. <laughs> All the taste, no bitter endings. Heineken Silver, world class light beer. At Bank of Hawaii, we believe that part of living your happy is feeling safe and secure. 
It also means knowing your hard-earned money will be there when you need it. That's why Bank of Hawaii is proud to be a bank people have trusted with their money for 125 years. And we're the only local bank ranked one of America's most trustworthy companies by Newsweek two years in a row. So you can rest easy knowing your money's safe. Bank of Hawaii, put your trust in our strength. At Taco Bell Hawaii, the shredded Kahlua pork, grilled stuffed burrito, double XL quesadilla, and nachos bel grande are back. Spread the word, Kahlua pork is back, only at Taco Bell Hawaii. Welcome back, let's check out tonight's head, Hyundai head-to-head -head stat line. And we're looking at uh, the two top hitters, or at least two of the top hitters for each side. As Ava McKinnis, six kills, four digs, three blocks. Amber Igidi, 13 kills, one dig, and two blocks. Amber Igidi hitting 571. Just taking over the hitting for UC San Diego has been uh, submitting uh, Jehovah. He's got 10 kills to lead all Tritons. One of the dig there by Wagner over the net wrap. Couldn't get it down a second time either. Now Hawkins the swing. And no touch, it goes long, point for UCSD out of the timeout. Hawaii up two sets to none. I, I think that Hawkins had the right idea of aiming for the high hands, just uh, she just missed it. There wasn't much of a approach she had. Oh, look at that save by Matias. What a play by Hawaii just to give themselves a chance at prolonging that point but it ends up being an extended ace for Nevada Knowles, who came into this match third on the team in that category. So we're tied at 15. Second ace of the night for UC San Diego. Pacas. Oh, that was pure. Well, she's got the heavy arm, doesn't she? Isn't this sort of hard? And she is grooving. You know, on senior weekend, Interesting to see a freshman, yes, an older freshman, but a freshman nonetheless, really peaking. He can knock at the dig, then adjust above the tape. And it's gonna be a point for UCSD, they call a lift against Amber. Give credit to Jasmine Saran going up and up right there with one of the best in the business in the middle. Yeah. And they can argue with yet another dig on the sharp angle. Nikkei Naga up to 12 saves. Matias going outside, Hakas lights it on fire. That was a missile. Oh my goodness. There wasn't much room to hit down that line between the wow. outside blocker and the antenna, but Hawkes found that opening and almost took Nevada Knowles' head off. Yeah, I think that got the uh, heart rate up a little bit for Nevada Knowles. Yeah. 17, serving 16. But Saran very coolly and calmly gets the point back for the Tritons and now she's back to serve. Just like a rerun of the second set. In case you just joined us, it was like, what, 10 ties and five lead changes? Hawaii way out of system here. Free ball coming over, advantage. Tritons, Knowles going outside, McInnes. And she lays the heavy artillery as well. Now McInnes is getting her groove on. Started slow. Six kills, four errors, hitting under 100. Now she's got it going on. Hi, GD, that set was a little low, so she soft touched it over. Hawaii gets another chance, though. A higher set, and I GD was able to pummel it. It's almost like Matias was saying, Oh, Amber, I'm so sorry I set you low in that first one. Let me give you a better set here. Oh, yeah, let's run it back. <laughs> One thing you don't want to do is underset high hitters. 
Yeah, let Amber go up and get it. 18 all. Amber almost went up and got that one. On two knees, he cannot get a save. Here's Alexander. Bounces it off of the Terraflex. Oh, with some pretty good right side presence. Takes a lot of heat off Amber Igedi. Amber went hard on that. Held the middle, middle late getting out there. Big hole in that block. Talia Edmonds the serve. Right side, this is Brooker. Lauren Brooker with eight kills to go along with the 13 assists, six digs, and two blocks. You can see why she was named all tournament a couple of times and freshman of the week a couple of times. Great all around player. So we're tied again here at 19. Backside, Alexander. She's starting to percolate. Alexander can be so physical at the net. She was down the line, she had the deep cross court shot. She can hit a nice little cut inside the three meter line. And when she goes to the back row, she can hit the D ball in the pipe. Oh, what a serve. It's an ace. Amber Igedi, what can't she do? Timeout Tritons. Mama loves it. Being Hawaii's best bank has been our goal since we were Hawaii's first bank. But being first was just the beginning of a bigger journey, a deeper commitment. One first leading to another is how we set the standard for an industry and help turn trial runs into traditions. Because being first once just makes you the oldest. Doing it every day is what makes you the best. Bank on the best. First Hawaiian bank. It all starts with yes. It got me a paradise. It's your paradise too. Experience the beauty of the islands in a Honda hybrid with fuel efficiency and range that saves you money while keeping our Aina a paradise. Right now, kick off adventure in the perfect island ride, a new Honda hybrid, and get two years complimentary maintenance. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. Tell him Henry said. I call him my miracle baby because he survived. When we couldn't find my son's heartbeat, the doctors and nurses at Kaiser Permanente sprang into action and saved his life. They took care of me beginning to end and that let me focus on my baby. It's really changed my perspective on what medical care can be. My husband and I are just so thankful. He's alive today because of them. World-class maternity care for all that is you, Kaiser Permanente. Welcome back. Well, we're going to do it again tomorrow. It's going to be officially senior night, Hawaii and Long Beach State, in a match that, if Hawaii hangs on here, will have a lot riding on it, potentially. 21-19, out of the timeout. Another good serve there by Igedi. Here's Rapp. The dig by Amber. Matias backside, Alexander. Had to improvise a little bit, but she got it done. And once again, that play started with Igedi. Then she got a dig. And then Alexander finishes with a nice wipe off the outside hand of the blocker. But Amber pretty much has her hands all over every play. Dig there by Matias. So Edmonds will bump set Alexander blocked. V up by IGD, what quick reactions. McInnes dug up by Edmonds. Here's Alexander, oh, that set was off the mark, but she made it work anyway. Checking the deal, turns to Alexander goes, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to set you that wide. And Alexander made the most of it. How about a reaction, quick reaction by the athletic Amber IGD. And the timeout taken by UC San Diego. 4-0 scoring run here for the Rainbow Wahine. Well, we mentioned what could be riding on the match tomorrow between Hawaii and Long Beach State. Here's the updated standings. UC Santa Barbara, they've locked in the one seed. 
for the Big West Conference Tournament next week. But you have the four teams with four loss, or the three teams, I should say, with four losses. And so Hawaii and Long Beach State will be able to battle tomorrow night. And whoever wins that will get the number two seed. Well, they're going to look into the tiebreakers and all of that stuff. But yeah, Hawaii can put itself in position to get that two oh, seed. Yeah, Hawaii will get the two seed. If they lose, they'll get the four seed. And here is the Big West tournament bracket. UC Santa Barbara is the top seed. And we're still waiting for everything else to sort itself out. And pretty much if Cal Poly wins tomorrow, I think they have UC Riverside or something. If they win that one, then uh, um, if Hawaii loses, they would be in a tie with Cal Poly. And I think then I think Long Beach ends up being in a tie with Cal Poly. Cal, Cal Poly wins that tiebreaker with Long Beach State, and they would go to the three seed. Hawaii would go to the four seed. And Cal Poly would go to the two seed. This is according to Greg Kaleo Baxter. <laughs> I got all that information from before the game. Well, he would know. He would break it down. Yeah. The volley nerd, the ultimate volley nerd. Yeah. The self proclaimed, self named. Here's McInnes. He's dug up by IGD. Oh, that set got away from Matias. But there was a touch on the UCSD side, so we can keep this thing playing. McInnes dug up by Matias, but missing that back line was Wagner. Well, Amber's going to get high fives all around. She goes to the bench. Everybody's congratulating her. Not on her hits across the front row, but no. her serving and digging. And that really got the crowd riled up as well. Pretty boisterous bunch here in Manoa tonight. Matias goes middle to Evans. Dig by Rapetti. Got it to got dug up by Matias. Free ball coming back over. Pump set. Got it through the block. Punched up there by Evans. Here's Alexander with a true swing. Cross court and in. And they will rise here at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Nice set for Matias and Alexander faced a strong, two, well-formed two-man block, and she just ripped across court. Nice little cut shot. Aloha ball for the match. Oh, Alexander tried to get precise with it, missed it to the near side, but it remains Aloha ball. The crowd will remain standing. And Alexander's going to stay in the back row for a possible back row attack, but this crowd is lively. Slide, Evans, it's over. Hawaii takes it. Ekahia Lua Aloha. And Kennedy Evans provides the exclamation point. That was a true team win, Kanoa. 11 people contributing all in significant ways. Even Chandler Cowell right there with her bad knee. She was cheering like crazy on the sideline. Oh, yeah, happy Robin. I've never seen Robin that smiling that much after a match. Have you? Look at that. Well, her team hit 313 for the match, hit 400 in that last set. And yeah, they're having some fun here on the final weekend of the regular season. I'll tell you one thing, Robin Nelmo got a good look at a lot of outside hitters for tomorrow night. I'm not sure who she's going to start, but it's going to be really interesting. I will tell you this, Tyler Hildebrand is going to have to do a lot of film watching of the Hall of Hawaii's hitters that could possibly start. All right, let's send it over to Scott. Coach, first off, congratulations. It was a match where everybody was involved, but Tally Hawkins has really stepped it up for you guys. I think... Like during that Santa Barbara match, the, I think just her energy level, it just, it came back. It was dormant for a little while. It came back. Uh, she just kept it at that level. Yeah. Were you concerned about this match knowing Long Beach State awaits? I'm concerned about every match. You know, they like, you know, bubbling like this. 
But they, they pulled it off, wasn't bad. I think I know the answer to this, but are you guys ready for tomorrow night? Am I ready? I'm always ready. Are they ready? They better be ready. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. See you tonight. <laughs> guys. So thanks a lot, Scott. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. Natalie Rapetti, 18 digs, three assists, a kill, and a service ace. Amber Igidi was just incredible again. 14 kills, hit 500. A couple of blocks, a couple of digs. A service ace herself. Uh, honorable mention has to go to Tally Hawkins. A career high 12 kills tonight for her. Absolutely. She really, especially in that first set, she was so good. Where she had six kills in that first set alone. Half of her kills came there. But she just came in on fire. And then, you know, when she was pulled out for Alexander or for Paula Gershing, you know, she was the first one to be cheering for all of them. So it wasn't like she was mad that she got pulled, even though she was playing well. You'd think, uh, you know, she could go in and pout or something for getting pulled, but she wasn't pulled for anything she did badly. She was pulled because Robin Amo really wants to see how all five outside hitters are going to keep battling for those starting spots on senior night. So Hawaii gets win number 20 on the season, 20 and 8 overall. 13 and four in the Big West Conference, and it sets up an important showdown tomorrow night on Senior Night, Hawaii and Long Beach State, like it was always meant to be. Don't forget about the post-game show. They'll break down an impressive Hawaii win, but for now, for CMAC, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Until next time, aloha from Manoa. If new Heineken Silver was a riveting Viking saga. Gosh, this West. A family tortured my first wife and stole my second favorite goat. Now do you want to marry my daughter? Okay. <laughs> All the taste, no bitter endings. Heineken Silver, world class light beer. How deep do Pizza Hut's roots run in Hawaii? Through all the decades, we know what our island ohana love. Great taste at an even better price. Like our large one-topping carryout pizza for just $14.99. You choose your favorite topping. Pepperoni, olives, sausage, or any other single topping. Our $14.99 large one-topping pizza. Order online and carry one out today. Only at Hawaii Pizza Hut. Aloha! I'm Valerie Joseph, and you're watching Spectrum OC16. How's it going? You got Lanai with Cooking Hawaiian Style, presented by the University of Hawaii Maui College. And look who we got in the kitchen this week. It's Frank B. Shaner. Thank what you. are you going to be making? Well, we're going to really um, delve into the cream tuna grilled rice bowls. Nice. And then, bang, we're going to come right back. My mom's favorite. Uh -huh. And I, I start to tear up when I do this. <laughs> cream tuna on rice. That's what this show's all about. We want a little emotion in the Thank food. Thank you. Check your local listings for times. It's cooking Hawaiian style. On this special edition of Board Stories TV, we head down to Nicaragua for a collaboration with Rise Up Surf Retreats. With a number of talented surfers, including a squad of young Peruvian surfers, this adventure is packed with action. Join us as we explore the firing beach breaks of Nicaragua. Tune in to Board Stories TV Saturday nights at 9.30 on OC16. Sunday. Hawaii squares off against the Idaho Vandals to close out the Bank of Hawaii Classic. Rainbow Wahine basketball, only on Spectrum Sports. From Spectrum Sports, it's the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Well, let's take a look at the final numbers from this one. Hawaii winning in three over UCSD. Hawaii hit a robust 313 to 215 for the Tritons. Hawaii also with 12 more kills. The block advantage in favor of the Tritons, the dig advantage in favor of Hawaii. And we talked about it in game on. UCSD came in with more aces than errors on the year as a team. Didn't work out that way tonight as they had two aces and eight errors. Hawaii with four aces and seven errors. Hi, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Scott, Lisa, Ryan. Hawaii picks up win number 20 on the year. More importantly, they pick up another conference win, which means tomorrow more than likely. And I, I, 
I think it's safe to say, but you never know. Cal Poly probably should beat Riverside. So it really sets up tomorrow night, Hawaii Long Beach State for that second bye. Ah, uh, feels like we're back in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> yes. Hawaii versus Long Beach State in a, uh, with postseason implications. Uh, this is what fans love. Unfortunately, Hawaii has put themselves in a position where they re it really comes down to this last match of the season. Uh, of course, there's a tournament next week, but this could make a huge difference in seeding. Uh, you know, the, the first mission was accomplished tonight, winning convincingly and winning uh, and getting this W tonight. Uh, but tomorrow should be a battle. You know, you mentioned convincingly. Uh, it didn't feel convincingly to me, I mean, they won in three, that first set from start to finish their head, but they had to work hard, I thought, the second and third sets. I agree, they had to work very, very hard. You gotta give credit to the Tritons. They came in and they gave it their all, but Hawaii from the get-go had good energy and there was a lot of flow going on, a lot of substitutions. We saw Jackie Matias come in and set an offense who I think did a fabulous job. When it was tight, it was late in that second game when she came in and, and they ended up pulling that game off, but you know, I think they're just happy to get in and out in three tonight because they know, like you said, Ryan, back to the beach. <laughs> you know, and I think one of the things we talked about in the you know pregame show was about this flux of Hawaii's lineup and the fact that there really is no solid starting lineup and things change so often. Uh, but we saw how it can work for this Hawaii team where there were so many mixed matches with, you know, Edmonds coming in in the back row for Hawkins. We saw uh, Gershing for a second, but then we, you know, saw uh, Riley Wagner play all the way around. Then we saw this 6-2 that we went just to <laughs> Jackie and uh, with Kaylin. So there was been there was so much combination tonight. But you're right, throughout it, they just seemed in sync no, no matter what personnel is on the court. And one of those players I was impressed with was Kaylin Alexander, who has been a starter and has had to come off the bench. And you never know what you're going to get. Seven kills and she hit over 300. And she was a big factor down the stretch. She really was. And I love when they use her out of the backcourt. I think she's so effective out of that backcourt here. A couple of her highlights on the right side. She's just so dynamic. You know, and I think that is a key point, Lisa, is that she's playing now on the right. Remember when she started the season, she was there 0-2 on that outside hitting position, that second outside hitter. And now she's transitioned back to this opposite, hitting in two rotations, primarily from the right. She hits one on the left in rotation number one, where she's positioned there on the left side and hits left front. But we're just seeing a side of her where she has the ability to hit from both pins as well as the backcourt, showing her versatility. Another player I thought stepped up that doesn't get the limelight is Kennedy Evans. I mean, she has just been steady. You know, first couple of weeks, it was a little bit of work in progress, but you know, seven kills on 14 swings without an error. And I'm glad they moved her around. We see here, she's hitting the slide. She got the game winner on a slide as well. We also saw her hit some threes, a drip play like that off the net as well. Uh, primarily in the beginning of the season, it was just pretty much one set uh, right on the setter. We're seeing her move around a lot more. Well, I think with time as well, she's just gotten uh, more consistent with the setters and she's audibleizing, calling for more balls. She's built her confidence as well. The other thing she does phenomenally well is block. I'll tell you what, she had her hands on a lot of blocks. They're not stuffed blocks, but mm -hmm. she's, she's slowing things down and the defense sets up right behind her. All right, we're going to take a break because you don't want to go anywhere. When we come back, join us in the corner for the last time in her career, the great Amber IGD. At Taco Bell Hawaii, the shredded Kahlua pork, grilled stuffed burrito, double XL quesadilla, and nachos bel grande are back. Spread the word, Kahlua pork is back, only at Taco Bell Hawaii. There's nothing I love more than being a farmer. Every day I get to care for my sheep and feel connected to the land. Believe it or not, I think it makes me better at my other job, managing Bank of Hawaii's branches in Hilo. Because like farming, Banking is all about caring for the needs of customers and businesses in our local community so they can grow and reach their fullest potential. I'm Steven Sylvester, and I'm proud to work for a company that gave a farmer like me the chance to make a difference in my community. Bounced from one doctor to the next. Did they even send my lab work? Wait, was I supposed to bring that? Then there's the forms, the bills, the not a bills, the... Healthcare can get a whole lot easier when your medical records, care, and coverage are in one place. 
At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together for all that is you. What's up, everybody? Cooking the holiday meal over here, making apple pie. All right. Babe, hey, when you go along, can you get butter and flour? Sometimes the holidays can get away from you. Luckily, our longs has everything we need. Make longs a part of your day. Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers post game show. And Sheriff Center, we take a look at one of the many highlights for Amber Eye. Genius Hawaii sweeps UCSD here, and it sets up tomorrow night second place match in the Big West Conference as well as senior night. And one of the six seniors I'll be honored, of course, is the young lady, two seats to my left, Amber IGD. It's kind of bittersweet because this is the last time we're gonna have you in the corner. I know, it's really bittersweet. Um, I don't know, it's really bittersweet, but I'm immense with the feeling of gratitude. So I'm excited to be with you guys today. 14 kills tonight. You know, I asked Robin, was there, were you concerned at all of maybe your team overlooking UCSD, knowing Long Beach State is tomorrow mm -hmm. night and it's senior night? Because you get, I don't think you guys played like that. Um, that what? That we were overlooking? No, I mean, was that a concern at all? Oh, um, no, I think um, we're really excited for senior night. And so it wasn't a concern because we really wanted momentum tonight in order to do well on senior night. And I think we did that. So we have a few things to tweak, but I think we got momentum for sure. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about, you said senior night. Yes. A lot of families coming into town, your family coming into town. Is it, does that present any extra pressure or distractions for you? Or do you think you can stay focused in and zone in on this big match? I think it actually provides some comfort because it brings me back, you know, to club days. Um, shout out to my club coach and my club back home. But um, it brings me back to club days when they would watch and I would love when my family would watch. So it's really comforting when my mom is here. I just waved at her in the crowd. So. Uh, yeah, it's really special. <laughs> Talking a little more about volleyball specifically, it's not only senior night, but it's a big match tomorrow yes. against Long Beach, a team that you guys lost who got swept at the pyramid, mm -hmm. an opportunity to play them now here at home uh, with, you know, significant, uh, you know, something significant on the line, a, yeah. a potentially a second seeding in the conference. Mm -hmm. How important and what do you think that you're, uh, the team needs to do coming out against the beach tomorrow night? Yeah, we need to really focus in. I think um, not get too high, not too low, just keep a consistent um, incline in the game. And I think um, we've got it. We've done a lot of studying on film um, and practicing in the gym. We had a nice practice week. So I think, I think we're well prepared, but um, we just need to execute tomorrow. You know, this season has been kind of different because we've seen so many different lineups mm -hmm. throughout the season. Do you feel like you guys are getting closer and closer to playing that match? Yes, we're, we're closer and closer, I think, to achieving greatness because um, I think what's good about her, you know, mixing it up is that we know that everyone can show up. And so um, it's harder for other teams and it's also really comfortable for us because we can play with anyone, you know? So, um, yeah, I think that's really exciting. It's hard to believe that you've been here for so long <laughs> when you think about it, right? Because you came in in 2019, oh, correct? Yes. And then there was COVID. So there was a little bit of a uh, extended career, if mm -hmm. you will. Uh, and then you guys got to playing. I, I saw your former coach, Angelica Lundquist, yes. in the tunnel, <laughs> talked to her. She just said she couldn't believe uh, how fast it went by. And she was so proud of you uh, specifically. But what has this whole experience been like for you? When you think back to that first season, you know, you guys made it to the Sweet 16, was such a successful year, and, and you've had such a career uh, mm -hmm. since then. How would you summarize your experience as a whole? Oh my goodness, I would summarize it as almost like destiny. I think I was really meant to be here. Um, just playing in a place that holds volleyball to such a high standard with spirit and love. Um, I, I'm just been so grateful, and I would have never thought, people say this, but it's truly true, I would have never thought I'd be in the position that I am since the freshman year, because if you saw me freshman year, I make a few dumb plays now, but before then <laughs> I was just running with my head cut off like a chicken. So I think it's really great to see the progression and it's really rewarding for my teammates from the past years too. <laughs> so Robin always says that she, you're one of the people that comes into the gym and gives 110% mm -hmm. always, and you want it so badly. And her biggest word for you through the years, what I can remember, do you know what it is? <laughs> is it patience? <laughs> exactly. My teammates make fun of Do me. Do you that. feel like you've gotten, like you've grown into that, having more patience? 
with yourself? I think I have. She might not agree with it, but <laughs> I think I genuinely have. And um, for anyone that wants to work to uh, get better, I think you have to fail a little bit or have to, you, you just, you can't always be perfect. So that was um, my issue. And so I think patience is, and hard work is a great combination to have. So I think I've gotten a little better with that. All right, I last question. <laughs> I know you obviously want to play professionally and play on the Olympics. What are your other long-term goals? Ooh, besides volleyball, I would love to be a mental health therapist. My mom's a counselor. She owns her own business, and I think um, it runs in the family a little bit. My dad's a sociology major, so um, I think that's great, and I would love to pursue that after volleyball. So my teammates ask me for advice sometimes, <laughs> maybe unsolicited, I give my advice. But, you know, I think it's in my blood, so. <laughs> Do you Dr. think eventually Amber. you'll end up back in, ba in Baton Rouge? Oh, I don't know. I don't or know. Maybe I love to explore. Honolulu. Exactly. I love to explore. You know, mental health is a big thing everywhere. So I'm excited anywhere God will take me. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, it's been fun these last five years or whatever it's been. <laughs> and we've enjoyed watching you every single match. And not just best of luck tomorrow, but best of luck the rest of your life. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Amber IGD, our special guest here in the corner. She and her teammates winning three over UCSD.